Hello, everyone. My name is Cutie, and welcome to Perilous Paths, a brand new show here on GDQ Hotfix. So we focus on Souls-likes, Roguelikes, and Metroidvanias, three genres that have seen a wide explosion in the last five or ten years, and they share a lot of different themes in terms of both game design and how they tell their stories. Now, we plan to take a pretty, let's say, broad definition of those three genres. So if it has challenging gameplay, exciting exploration, or meaningful progression, it's going to be fair game. Now, we have planned an absolute banger of an episode for you guys today. Uh, we have a hottie running uh, Bloodborne All Bosses Restricted, one of my absolute favorite games, has an amazing soundtrack. It's uh, It's gotten a little less love recently, and I want to bring it back. And then we also have Jupiter Climb, who is one of, if not the, Castlevania speedrunner, who's going to be doing a special little showcase of a mod that turns uh, one of the Castlevania games into a roguelike. That's how I'm cheating to get three uh, genres into this episode. So you get a little taste of everything to come. Uh, but without further ado, I want to welcome uh, Hadi into the stream and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you're going to be running, and yeah, let's have some fun. All right. So I'm a Hadi. Uh, I've been running Bloodborne, which is uh, very on theme for this. It's the most <laughs> Souls like of the Souls likes. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, I've been running this game for just about seven years now, uh, which is crazy to hear, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's pretty fun. And yeah, so we're going to do some all bosses for you. If you want me to count you down for a timer. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. So as we're off, getting, oh, I was going to say, as go we're ahead. getting into it, tell us a little bit about for anyone who hasn't uh, seen or experienced the joys of Bloodborne, tell us a little bit about what we can expect here. Uh, you can expect, so this is the restricted category, as you can uh, see from the title, but uh, that basically means it's more of a, a pure progression of the game. There's not a, a, there's some minor sequence breaks, but as far, um, as far as that goes, it's pretty much a standard progression of the game, which I enjoy. Um, but that doesn't mean there's no glitches. There's going to be quite a few glitches, quite a few skips. Um, and we start off pretty hot with the skips. Um, in about two minutes, we'll get to our first one. But so first, we're going to head to the dream. Oh, was, I'm sorry. Uh, what does the restricted category prohibit then specifically? If we're still allowing glitches of various kinds, what, what are we cutting out? There's one skip that we've already bypassed that the restricted category doesn't allow, and that is using the wolf enemy in the clinic back there and you use its grab attack to push you through the gate and get to Forbidden Woods early, um, that skips, or that saves uh, probably about f over over four minutes in any percent and close to three minutes in all bosses, so it's a pretty big skip. And then it also disallows the use of the cannon glitch, uh, which basically lets you have infinite uh, cannon shots and just you just shred bosses with that, like... It's really cool. Oh, I wish I set up a, a little demonstration of that. Might have been cool, but another day. So yeah, we just so, grabbed our weapon that we're going to use for basically the whole run. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I know the weapons make obviously a big difference in all Souls likes, but I know there's a few different weapon choices for Bloodborne. So what are we going with here and what is like... Why do you prefer that weapon over some of the others? So the saw cleaver is one of the three weapons you can get, and uh, it's it's a similar speed to the cane in terms of how fast it attacks, but it uses very low stamina, and it does a ton of damage, so that's why we choose the saw cleaver. Um, and the scaling is, is nice. It's sort of a, a quality scaling, so halfway between strength, halfway between skill. So there we just saw the first skip that I was talking about, sewer skip. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get the plunge attack, so we have to quit out here. Um, quit outs don't add to your in-game time, which is how we time the runs for the leaderboards, but for a marathon, it's going to add about 20 seconds. That's okay. 
And how um, how precise is the plunge versus you know the quit out? Is that kind of you know pixel perfect? A couple of different spots uh, like it's quite precise. Like um, you can hit it on multiple points on the fence, uh, but it depending on how far you jump, you may fall back in bounds or you may just not hit it at all. In which case uh, you'd have to quit out. So yeah, it's quite precise. I probably get it like half the time. This is actually my favorite, maybe ever casual boss. Like every Souls like has a has kind of a gatekeeper boss that forces you to really engage with mechanics. And and Father Gascoin here is is my personal favorite because you cannot you cannot beat this guy if you do not know how to play Bo Bloodborne. Oh, that's not good. Missed the Molotov there. That's okay. Ooh. Just give me a good attack. So you can see why this boss is uh, a little tough. It's okay, you got him. Now he's done though. Oh, if that Molotov hit, that was basically a perfect fight, but you know. Uh, it happened. Pretty good to me. <laughs> yeah, this is where I think so so what's great about Bloodborne is for Souls games, they kind of inverted the formula from Dark Souls where everybody was like heavy armor and shields and stuff, and then this game values aggression a lot more. And Gascoin oh, yeah. is kind of like the boss that teaches you that. Like if you don't play him aggressively, he will just mow you down. Because he's got the blunderbuss, right? So, like, if you back off, he'll just shoot you, and then you'll keep wasting your heals. So, and then once you're out of, once you're out of blood vials, you just kind of, the fight's over for a casual. So I grabbed a few extra blood vials, thankfully, so I was able to heal there to be safe. And then we'll get another stack here. That's kind of the, the theme of the run, is you want to grab as few vials as you can. But there are some places, especially in the DLC, where you take a lot of fall damage, so you have to heal. So if you run out of vials, it's kind of impossible to do areas quickly. Um, so yeah, that's a, a little hurdle. Speaking of the DLC, one thing that's always sort of fascinated me about Bloodborne's categories is it does include the DLCs for things like all bosses, whereas right. a lot of games will, you know, separate out DLCs or have two separate distinct groups. And that's consistent among the Souls games as well. Uh, once okay. the DLC is released in a new Souls game, then it just becomes part of the all bosses run. Um, but yeah. So in, in that case, this is me just thinking out loud, what happens to the previous leaderboards when the DLC comes out? Are they archived, um, replaced? They're usually archived. Um, well, it depends, because on speedrun.com, it just sort of... Uh, generally, the people will just overwrite their runs. Like, we, we, don't, uh, we don't archive that leaderboard, I guess. So, um, yeah, I guess that's a little sad now that, now that you think about it, like... <laughs> If there if there was a, a pretty big progression in the in the speedrun leaderboards before the DLC came out, but generally I think the DLC comes out relatively early in the in the game's life. This might not work. No. Okay, that's another skip. Okay. Old Yarnum skip. Oh, we got a little bit of a glitch going here. Yeah, that's my walls. favorite out of bounds because you just kind of like fall through the roof like it's nothing. I'm going like to try the, uh... to do this skip. I think I got it. We'll see. <laughs> what, what are we trying to do there? Are we glitching into the walls again? or? Well, there I was trying to grab the beast blood pellets without touching the ground. And then because it doesn't save your position, it puts you back on top. So okay. you don't have to run all the way around. I think it worked. It did work. Hey, nice. I'm also doing a, a relatively newer route 
So I'm going to be doing another skip very shortly called Hut Skip. Probably the hardest skip in the run. But thankfully, it's kind of right next to a lamp, so it doesn't really matter if you mess it up. This is kind of one of those uh, classic uh, bosses where you do like the uh, the blood vials on the ground kind of thing to distract him and then just kind of go after him. But you can see he gets pretty mad. But you make it look easy, of course. <laughs> that that is not how, that, that that is not how that fight goes when I try it. I can it's a you very that. difficult strategy, like uh, doing it without the cocktails, and it doesn't really save that much time. But every second counts uh, if you know speed running. <laughs> you know, it's a so, thing. We we try to do things fast. <laughs> it only saves about seven seconds, but especially in the early game, that's pretty significant. Once things start getting more consistent, uh, the fights are more or less scripted. So you don't, there's not a whole lot of variance in time, but at, in the early game, because the fights are so random, because you don't really have the damage output yet, uh, they can, those small time saves can add up pretty quickly. So then would you say like the, the reset heavy areas or like the, uh, the more difficult areas are going to be at the beginning of the game? Oh yeah, definitely like the first, the first like 30 minutes of the run, especially if you're grinding for like record runs are extremely reset heavy. I think um, there's, a, there's a website that tracks your split stats and um, I think it was like 70 plus percent of my resets are just on the first split. <laughs> so it gets it gets really, really reset heavy. Yeah, I know I'm kind of the same way whenever I'm running something. I'm like, if the first, you know, split or first 15 minutes don't look good, I'm like, ah, just do it again. <laughs> yeah, right. Because you're so early, like it's not worth continuing an hour long run. So when we're talking about all bosses, is there anything like a mini boss that's included in that? Or is it basically all enemies with health bars? Like how do we kind of determine what is and isn't a boss and what we do and don't have to do? So that's a good question because if you've played Bloodborne, then you know there's uh, like sort of little side areas called the Chalice Dungeons. So we don't actually go into the Chalice Dungeons at all, even though there are uh, enemies with health bars, like boss-type enemies in the Chalice Dungeons. Um, the Chalice Dungeons are reserved for the All Trophies speedrun, which gets the Platinum Trophy. But yeah, so other than that, any boss with a health bar in the main game outside of the Chalice Dungeons is fair game. And I know we're buffing a lot with fire for all of the bosses. Is that just because of a, a damage amp, or, is, or are they actually specifically weak to fire versus other um, things? A lot of these beast-type enemies are weak to fire, so it really helps in the early game. Uh, but later in the run, when less of your damage is coming from these papers, uh, it's not as big of a deal. Because I think it's a flat 80 damage, uh, plus there's a multiplier depending on what type of enemy there are, or they are. But once you get later into the run, uh, that it's not a percentage, right? It's a flat damage, so it's it's less important as far as you'll see me using less papers as the run goes on. Also, you'll notice I quit out right after grabbing that lamp. That was deliberate. Uh, I, if, if you noticed on the ladder, right after I entered this area, I did a little glitch where my character kind of snapped towards the ladder. So I stored my position at the ladder, and now when you spawn back in, you just are completely teleported from the top of the stairs back down to that ladder. So that's quite a that's a, quite a run. Yeah, that's like decent a good chunk 10, of time and twenty seconds there. Yeah, for sure.
I love how you're just like casually running through like everything, <laughs> every random yeah. monstrosity that happens to be running the streets. You're like, I'm good. I'm just going to go straight through. I'm not going to look at it. <laughs> like Most of the enemies are relatively slow or they just start in a like a T-pose kind of state where they're it takes them a while to get up. So if you just run past most enemies, they, they can't really hit you. Which I find a little hilarious. And we're just uh, collecting some upgrade materials. Uh, there's a lot of those upgrade materials in this area. So because we're doing that skip I talked about, hut skip, that basically skips 90% of this area, you can't get a lot of the uh, upgrade materials. Like, they're just not accessible. So we're going to buy those with insight. Which is one of the reasons why this route is kind of difficult. Because when you spend your insight, you can no longer get the, the plus 10. So this is a plus 9 route. Whereas a, a traditional all bosses route would get plus 10. And is that just like a calculation of like the damage per second versus like the time it takes to get you to those materials so it just kind of yeah. works out as a little faster exactly that's exactly what i did when i routed this out like i went and calculated like or timed how much time you were losing on every fight with plus nine versus how much you save by not or by allowing this skip because if that, you didn't that, do the skip you'd be able to buy the blood rock that poor poor doll <laughs> Unfortunately, she talks too much, so it's faster to kill the doll and then level up versus waiting for the dialogue. Is there ever, like, I know there's, like, a save for the animals versus kill the animals in, in Metroid. Is there ever a thing, like, save the doll versus kill the doll? No, not really. Um, but funnily enough... If you're doing New Game Plus runs, the doll's HP actually scales just like normal enemies. So in all trophies, I think after New Game Plus 2, it's faster to talk to her versus killing the doll. Mm. <laughs> so it's kind of like a payback like after all that, because you kill her, I think, three times in this run. Whereas in all trophies, you do it much more because it's a longer run, you're leveling up more. And we're moving fast here, but I want to clarify, that was an intentional death, right? That it teleports was an intentional you here, death. yeah. Yes. I don't want people thinking like, he just ran into the dude and died. <laughs> like. and that's another uh, routing change, because you can access this boss later, uh, but it's a little bit faster to do it now. I just, I just love the enemy design in Bloodborne, like, it's just crazy boss right here. And yeah, that that was definitely a scripted fight. <laughs> I was gonna say, that took about six seconds, but... <laughs> yeah. And that one, that one is optional, if I remember correctly, right? You don't actually have... Yes. Not, not for the route, but in the game in general. Yeah, so you would not see Parl in any percent. But he does unlock Volt Paper, so that's uh, one benefit of doing all bosses is you get a little bit little bit of extra damage output. Whew. And this is the, the rough skip I was talking about here. Um, there's there's so many parts of it that can go wrong. It's It's basically three skips back to back. So you can just kind of run out of bounds there, which I find hilarious. Like, there's just like sort of jog out of bounds. So that's the first part of the skip. Oh no, I did not mean to press X. That's okay. Yeah, I was trying to jump, but I accidentally uh, pressed the lever there. From software is so so against invisible walls. They just let you run right out. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, we're not gonna put anything there. We're we're good. But no there's like so it. rolling into that hut. There's like a pixel ledge that you have to run and jump off of. So it's like it's a little bit that didn't work. It's a little bit 
uh, tricky because you have to roll far enough to land on the ledge, but if you roll too far, then you'll fall out of bounds because it's this really thin sort of seam on the edge of the, the hut that lets you get inside. And now I'm trying to hit this. There's like a this random invisible platform right there <laughs> that you can just kind of <laughs> land on and skip the elevator. And yeah, they hate it outside, but inside the hut, invisible is <laughs> all good. <laughs> yeah. And then another spot, you can just sort of run out of bounds. <laughs> and then this last part, sorry for all the quit outs, but that is called a, a, um, it's called a, uh, like a fall damage cancel or like a, like a slope quit out. So if you, if you fall onto a slope, it delays dying for a little bit, but your uh, position will still be saved. So you can just kind of, if, if there's a long enough slope, you can do stuff like that where you quit out just before you die and then it stops you from dying when you spawn back in. And is this, um, and, and you might not know this, but is this kind of standard type glitches in all Souls games? Like this is kind of like how From Software plat or programs some of their games, or is this like specific to Bloodborne? Uh, slope quitouts are found in, I believe, all of them. I'm not sure about Dark Souls 2 because the quitout mechanic is a little different. I know they're in Demon Souls. I know they're in Dark Souls 1. Uh, I'm not sure about DS3. I'm trying to think. But yeah, mo a lot of the glitch a lot of the games have shared glitches. A lot of out of bounds in this part of the run though, for sure. Uh, you, and you lots just of snuck into a boss room. I saw it. I saw the health bars. <laughs> yep. So that, that the whole ordeal of getting out of bounds there seems really slow because like you're right next to the boss, so you should be able to just run down there. But because we triggered the fight and we're going to enter the fight again from out of bounds, uh, they're not moving. So oh. that's pretty cool. It's a lot easier when this boss doesn't move. Yeah, the, these three are tricky, especially on the casual playthrough. But like, yeah, they're... They, they can definitely pose some challenges. So seeing them just stand in there, just not doing anything, is a little, little mind-blowing for me. I'm <laughs> like, I wish I knew how to do that. I honestly find that skip harder than actually fighting them, <laughs> which is... It's annoying because it's another one of those things where it's so early into the run, and the skip is... There's so many difficult skips in a row. Like, you fail one of them, and now you have to reset. Well, that looked pretty clean, so, so far, so good. So far, so good. And there is a strategy that I'm not going to be doing on this boss, I'm sorry, uh, where you kill the boss without uh, taking out the little spiders, and it's just so random that it's not... Uh, the success rate is probably 50 to 60%, so I'm probably going to avoid that. We'll, uh, we'll fight the boss... As yeah, Miyazaki this, intended. Th this boss is so critical to the plot of Bloodborne, but so annoying just as a boss. It's, it's just kind of a little silly with all the little spiders. Also, we just jumped off of that centipede's tail to gain a little extra height so we can skip getting the key. Oh, I'll stop backing up, spider. Yeah, I'm, I'm personally arachnophobic, so this boss is like, ah... And you can see why killing, not killing the little ones is potentially better. And if you don't kill all the little ones, do you just kind of drag them away and then go straight to the boss? Or, yeah, or how exactly. Do you, okay. You just do like a quick little run around to kind of gather them up and then quickly run back in and try to kill the boss and hope the, they don't bother you too much. Yeah, I wasn't sure if maybe it was like a YOLO strat, like you just run in there and pray the spiders don't get to you, and if they do, <laughs> ah, it's a reset, whatever. <laughs> like, Funnily enough, the strategy is called YOLO-ROM. <laughs> so, 
uh, it's not very successful most of the time. It's gotten better, but yeah, it's it, it can get pretty rough. So I know you said earlier you've been running Bloodborne for about seven years now, which I yeah. think is about the time that it released. I, I could be wrong. Yeah, about a, maybe a year after it released. So so what is it about Bloodborne specifically that keeps you running it versus, you know, transitioning to some of the newer ones or, you know, moving around a bit? What, what keeps you coming back to Bloodborne? Um, it's hard to say. It was the first game that I uh, speed ran, so... Like that probably has a lot to do with it. Sort of the, you know, the first one is always the, the most interesting. But I do speed run the other Souls games as well, just not quite as much. Uh, Dark Souls 1 is probably my, my biggest, oops, my biggest uh, alternative game that I play. But yeah, I probably have almost 5,000 hours in this game versus in Dark Souls 1, maybe a few hundred. So. Um, I'm not sure what keeps me coming back to it. I, I just really enjoy it. Uh, it's it's nothing in particular about the game. It's probably just because it was the first one. I mean, like I said, it's one of my favorite games ever. So for me, it's like the yeah. combination of like the designs, the, the game design, the creature designs, the OST is outrageous. We were talking about that a little bit before the show. Like just... The amount of effort they put into the orchestral music and the choirs and everything for this, like, I don't know, I, I, I'm with you there. I think it's a culmination of everything. Like, it's just such an amazing property. Um, so I really hope that, you know, the franchise, if we can call it a franchise, gets a little bit more love in the future. Maybe a remake, a remaster, a sequel, something. Oh yeah, but, like, that would be cool. I'm all in on the Bloodborne series, series being the one game, but at least we got an awesome DLC out of it too. Right. And if you noticed, I yes, I did just do a charged attack through that fence. <laughs> just, you know, the collision in this game in so many places is really wonky. You can just either run straight out of bounds or do an attack to kind of push you out of bounds. Like, there's a lot of that. Oh, that is, whoa. <laughs> I did not think that was going to hit me. Oh, wow. That's that. Yeah, you're down to a sliver there. Was... Yeah, because because we don't level up any vitality in this run, uh, it gets pretty scary. Generally, that that first spit that hit me there will uh, it'll hit that pillar, so I wasn't really expecting it to hit me. And so, if you don't level up vitality at all, is there any place in the game or a boss that can one-shot you? Like, is there something you're particularly scared of, or you're always going to have, like, a little bit of wiggle room? Pretty much everything from here on can one-shot you. <laughs> like, almost every boss has at least one attack that can kill you in one hit. So it does get scary. And especially here where we can't really see them too much on screen, but this whole arena is surrounded by fire archers, as you can see them kind of coming in every now and then. So I imagine this is a little scarier than hopefully it looks. Oh, that was such a good fight, though. Yeah, that was clean. <laughs> you always get the little uh, backhanded one fireball as you're leaving, like... <laughs> They just want to say waving. They just want to wave goodbye. Say thank you for right. coming. <laughs> we'll see you next time. And occasionally, if your health is low enough, that'll kill you after you've finished the boss. So, like that's that's pretty annoying. But yeah, that's probably one of the more random bosses in the run, just because of those uh, the uh, the mages or the the witches on the outside there. You can go up and and take them out before you go to the boss, but. Obviously, that's going to take a long time. I think there's like eight of them or six of them or something like that. Yeah, it's kind of reminiscent of, I think it might be Demon's Souls that has the Tower Knight, where there's the big Tower Knight and then right. Archie's all around the top. Definitely inspired by that boss. So because we... Sorry, you can go ahead. Oh, oh no, go ahead. You 
You tell me what's going on. <laughs> I was going to say, because we didn't run through the Forbidden Woods, we actually missed some Beast Blood pellets because um, that's where you get the majority of your pellets in this run are from the Forbidden Woods and Old Yarnum. Uh, and they take they, that, those two stacks of pellets will carry you to the point where you can buy them from the shop. But because we skipped most of Forbidden Woods, we have to go back there now to get those pellets. And what so, uh, do the, the pellets do? Why, why do we um, need them? They increase your damage output by 70% at the max. Why did that Molotov <laughs> miss? <laughs> um, they increase your damage output by 70% when your meter is full. Um, so that's pretty significant. But it also makes you take more damage up to 80% at max meter. So it's sort of like a glass cannon consumable. So that probably doesn't help with the whole one-shot thing we were talking about earlier, right? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> the poor doll, you just run right Poor in. doll. The running attack is a little more brutal. Now we go back to Forbidden Woods. The cool thing about the fact that we just leveled up now is we can save this Bold Hunter's Mark uh, to save more Echoes later because we only have like a few thousand right now. Uh, so we can switch to the regular Hunter's Mark and get rid of this 5,000 Echoes. We don't really need them. We're gonna go grab those pellets that we skipped. Actually, no, this is a different stack of pellets. Uh, not th the ones that we skipped are a little bit farther in the area. So if we skip the area, but then we have to come back for collectibles anyways, what does the skip add? Are we just canceling out half of the area or something? Um, how is so it faster than not running through here to begin with? Ah! Uh Take your time. Take so, your time. So, this I'm just gonna kill this guy. So, this is a, a section of the run that you would normally do later, um, but because we need the pellets, we go through it now. Um, just as so, it's like a a two for one deal. And that was another skip where you just kind of run out of bounds and just. That one's pretty scary though because uh, if you don't roll at the exact right point, or if you don't go out of bounds at the exact right point, then you'll get stuck in the wall and you won't be able to roll into the cave. So you, it's a very particular, there's two different spots you can run into the wall and uh, be able to roll back in bounds, but it's, it's kind of precise. There's, there's a very small window to land on uh, the right spot. And if you get stuck in the wall, what happens? Is that just a quit out, That's or is that a, like a run killer? You're permanently stuck there. It depends. Uh, there are some places you can quit out. It'll put you back on top. And other places, you, technically, you've hit the ground, so you'll stay down there. But uh, you'll still be out of bounds. So you won't be able to get back through the wall. In that case, you'll have to mark out and either redo the skip, or in most cases, it's just a reset. And it's a pretty tough skip, because as, as you can see, that enemy, if you're not fast enough, that enemy will run down and hit you, so you kind of got to do it pretty quickly. Oh, uh, the crows. The, the crow dogs and the dog crow things are like one of my favorite enemies in the game. <laughs> the first time you see them, they're like half and half, and then the next time you see it's them, they so swap funny. the halves. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that so blew this my mind why. in the casual game. Right. A lot of the enemies, the design is just so unique and you don't find it anywhere else. That's one of the things that makes this game so special. But yeah, this is why you have to go here at some point because that was a key item that lets you access an optional area. And there's a boss there. And then we also need this because that lets you access the, the secret sort of final boss. And 
and now we get back to the main sort of the main line of the game main progression and then at what point do we transition towards the dlc is that more at the end like a last thing before the finale or do we do it somewhere yeah. in the middle or is there a plan to that so there's only one boss or there's two bosses that you fight where am i going oh <laughs> there's only two bosses you alive. fight before yeah she actually if as long as you have one insight she respawns every time so she's not really dying so <laughs> I, I use that as an excuse um but the dlc there's only two bosses other than the final bosses that you do after the dlc so it's pretty much the last thing you do um and that's just because those are the strongest bosses they do the most damage uh so you want to be able to kill them as quickly as possible for speed purposes obviously and also for you know, just it's easier when you go back later yeah i was just wondering if maybe there was like oftentimes dlc has the strongest stuff right so maybe there could be a key item or a weapon or something you want to pick up earlier rather than later something like that that it's funny you mentioned that because the cannon glitch uh that i was talking about that's not allowed in this run uh, uses the weapon called the Whirligig Saw to activate it. So, and you get that weapon in the DLC. Um, so, yeah, you do go to the DLC relatively early in that run to obtain the Whirligig Saw. I just love the name of the saw. Of the Whirligig. <laughs> yeah. The later you obtain that weapon, the worse, because um, you don't want to be wasting your upgrade materials on the saw cleaver. You want to be using them on the cannon. So. Um, the longer you wait, the more materials you may need to grab to upgrade both the cleaver and the cannon. But we don't have to worry about that here because we're just using the one weapon. This area is pretty scary. A lot of these enemies can one or two hit you. And you'll notice we only have two vials, which seems scary, but uh, our next big vial pickup is in this boss fight. So yeah, you kind of go from, like I said, you want to pick up as few as possible, but because you take so much fall damage in a lot of places, you kind of need them. I like that someone in chat referred to it as the pizza cutter. <laughs> and I, call, I think I called the glitch when it first came out the pizza cannon. <laughs> so it, it it's uh it's a pretty pretty interesting glitch. I wish I could show it. Now this this is like one of the ultimate troll jobs in gaming right here. <laughs> this guy just uh, I assume there's a speed run strat to it, but this guy's kind of just running around laughing at you the whole time. So that was the speedrun strat you saw where I shot at him three times. So there's a there's a mechanic with this fight where if he's running to his final destination, if you hit him three times, he'll just stop and like turn around and aggro on you before he actually gets into the room. So we're going to use that to our advantage up here. You'll see in a second. Because in the second room, he actually closes a gate which is pretty slow because you have to wait for it to open after you finish the fight. So what we're going to do is... That was perfect RNG because he... We're going to block him so he can't oh, get wow. to his spot. And then we're going to hit him enough where he... Oh, that's scary. Was that where he just precise as it looked? That looked very, very spot It's pretty on. precise. Uh, when he does the good RNG there where he just runs to the left, then it becomes precise uh, because you have to sort of manage your stamina in a way where he will still be triggered to run into the room, but you'll get there, bef you'll get to the door before he does. So is you have to be fast, but not too fast. Because if you're too fast, he just won't run at all. He'll just stand in the middle of the room. 
Yeah, I, I put him up there with some of the great troll jobs in gaming history, along with like Raiden and Metal Gear Solid 2 and stuff. Very yeah. different type of troll job, but definitely a troll <laughs> job. But like, Mikolesh is, uh, he's, he's an interesting boss when you play this game casually. Let's put it he's that way. He's one of my favorite fights, to be honest. Uh, okay. It's pretty cool. It's, it's a puzzle boss done right, I would say. More good RNG. Hey, marathon RNG. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks scary, but it's not. It's, it, uh, the enemy doesn't really see you because you're kind of in that corner. I remember. I don't remember exactly what those guys do, but I do remember that they, they mess you up if they touch you. I, I think yeah, they, they steal levels you. or something. And they do frenzy damage, which is like a, just a massive chunk of your health in one tick. Um, the ones you're thinking of, the ones that steal the insight, they're the brain suckers, and you'll see them a little later. Okay. We've already seen one of them, but um, we didn't really have to interact with it. I like how they pre-fired the fireballs at you. They were like, we know yeah. he's coming back. <laughs> You gotta be careful. You can actually get hit by them, and if you get hit by two at the same time, you just die. It's that's a, such an uncommon death, but it's happened before. And then I used a blue elixir, which makes you sort of transparent, so enemies don't see you until you're really close. And then the benefit of those pigs and those shadows being together is that the pigs will run over the shadows and give you some echoes. So I don't even have to kill them and I'm just getting free money. And is that what we're gonna use to buy some of the other stuff later on that we were talking about earlier? Yeah, so we're gonna use, we mostly use echoes to level up, but we also use we use them in uh, very particular spots to buy vials, or paper. We're kind of done buying the paper and stuff um, because we can spend insight on that now. But uh, we will still use, I believe we're going to do one more level up. So that's why we're saving our echoes right now. That was a pretty solid fight. That was clean. Speaking of fights, you said earlier like some of the later ones are a little bit more scripted. At what point are we get heading towards scripted territory versus like still still a little worrisome, a little dangerous? Pretty much now is is scripted for ninety percent of the fights from here on. Okay. There are some fights where they're not scripted, but they die really quickly, so they pretty much are scripted, but they can do occasionally some some memes kind of like maria maria's a, a fight like that in the dlc where she's not scripted but she dies really quick oh i'm not supposed to, sorry that was not i wasn't supposed to do that yet <laughs> you're just so used to killing the dog yeah. you don't have a choice that's the run by i'm here i'm gonna do it <laughs> i'm sorry so because i did that now you have to see it happen again one extra time. I'm sorry, guys. And this is another skip. This skip looks really easy, but it's actually one of the harder ones. So you're trying to jump over this railing by kind of jumping off the corner of that pillar. And it's pretty tough. Like, if you... And the thing that makes it tough is that if you fail it three times, you're pretty much breaking even on time. So you have to... You have to get it within three tries to make it worth it. It only saves like 10 or 15 seconds. You got a second try there, so you're you're in the positive. Yeah, that's I, I typically aim for a second try because the first try is harder because you're kind of running at it. But once you can get it from a from a standstill and you can line it up a little better, then it becomes easier. So the second try is kind of like the first real try, I guess. So what I did there was I turned around, did the sit down gesture, fell off the ledge, quit out of the game. 
And what's going to happen is I'm going to spawn already falling. And that cancels the, the game's check to kill you if you drop down an elevator. Huh. So normally, this elevator would kill you if you drop down it. And is that something to do with doing the gesture that like that locks your position or something like that? The the gesture is just uh, is only used because of how little it moves you. So you can do it by just tapping very slowly. That did a lot of damage. That's one of the scripted fights, but it's pretty tough because you have to delay your attack to actually get damage on that first hit. If I did it just a little bit sooner, it wouldn't have done damage. Because hmm. the health bar wouldn't have been popped up yet. Well, that's so interesting. Now, when the uh, when the three guys earlier were frozen, I don't believe they're... Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe the health bars were up then, right? Yeah, that's that's an interesting uh, scenario where the health bar doesn't need to be up. Um, but bosses like Amygdala, the one I just did, uh, because the boss starts sort of in a... Like, outside of the arena, you have to wait until the health bar pops up. Chat's wondering if you're going to let the bosses fight back in this run. <laughs> <laughs> no, hopefully not, because when the bosses fight back, that's when you die, uh, typically. Especially from here, because I only have 10 vitality. And if the bosses fight back, they basically one-shot you almost every fight. And uh, this is a perfect example of that, because Celestial Emissary, you guys probably know, is one of the easier fights in just in Souls in general. However, because I only have 10 vitality, if you get hit by like one, maybe two of them at the same time, you're basically just dead. And there's a ton of them running around, so it's pretty scary. Especially since I don't have access to a Beast Blood pellet for them. I have to save this pellet for the boss after. So I'm only going to be using a bolt paper on this, on this fight. And since you're mainly leveling up for, for damage, of course, being a speedrun, is the main difference between a category like this and something like BL4 is just how long it takes to kill stuff? Yeah, and honestly, BL4 fights are not that much slower than standard fights because the Beast Blood pellets add so much damage. Um, the levels don't matter as much. It's sort of like a, a tier of things that matter. Like Beast Blood pellets are number one then levels, or sorry, then upgrades to your sock lever, then levels, kind of. That guy was pulling a Gandalf. He was like, you shall <laughs> not pass. <laughs> that was way harder than it looks, but you have to, like, hit the left or the right hand of that enemy with the... Uh, with the opened up swing of the sock lever. And if you're off by a little bit, you'll aggro the enemy, but you won't hit it. And then it'll just kind of stand there and you won't be able to hit it through the door. And that's sort of like a key item check there, that door, right? Getting that? Yeah, so you need that key for this door. Uh, normally you'd have to run around and climb a couple ladders, um, but because we are able to kill that enemy through the door, we don't have to go around. If you watch uh, glitchless runs, you'll notice that they don't do that. They they do run around. They're not allowed to do that, that skip. So this fight without a pellet is actually bad, like in every sense of the word. They just want hugs. Woo! That was so close. I saw the little guy in the background like winding up for his swing. I was like, this is going to go bad. But 
Yeah, if you get hit while you're doing a combo there, it's just kind of over because the big guy will stomp on you. And that's not going to be the last uh, we see of those, right? There's there's another spot for, for some of those? For those guys? Yeah, there's uh, another fight in the DLC for that, right? Oh, yeah. So there's like the living failures are like the big version of those guys, like the big bad version. <laughs> and they're significantly scarier. I think I missed the tentacles. So this might be bad. No? Okay. Nice little uh, Cthulhu guy here. Yep, that's that's pretty easy. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> straightforward. That's another one of those strats where you have to wait, though, for the health bar to pop up. Otherwise, you won't do any damage, and then it becomes bad. So so when you, you said you to... missed the uh, the tentacle, um, but there was no health bar, so what happens if you missed it, or what were you trying to do hitting him there specifically? I was, I was trying to do just enough damage, so the boss was one hit away from staggering, but uh, waiting until the health bar popped up so my first hit would actually do damage. Um, but I thought I missed the tentacle because I need three hits on the tentacle to get it to stagger, or four hits to get it to stagger, but three before the health bar pops up. Yeah, that was the no pellet strat, Mario. That's uh, that's the the fun the fun stuff. <laughs> now every time now, you go back, I'm just waiting to see if you kill the doll. Like I'm like, is he gonna do it? It's <laughs> done. I promise happen? I won't kill the doll anymore. We, we're <laughs> at our final level of 51. Usually 52, but I did not get enough echoes from the pigs before Murgo's wet nurse, so we're only able to get 43. Um, strength versus 44. Not a big deal. It doesn't affect anything but this upcoming boss, so. And then what does it do for, for this boss? Is it just, like, one extra hit? It changes the combo. It's the same number of hits, but it's a slower combo. So if you get 44 strength, you can do one transform attack at the end of the combo, and now I have to do two. So it's still five hits, but... Uh, slightly slower five hits, I guess, like half a second. And correct me if I'm wrong, but we're going back to the beginning of the game, right? This is the first boss, but it's a <laughs> tutorial boss that's like semi-optional. So you can fight this boss whenever you want, really. And we're going to fight him now. With our maxed out saw cleaver. Maxed out stats. And that's, yeah, that's supposed <laughs> to be the first boss. But you take it out so easily now. That almost looked like a New Game Plus type thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's now always um, the DLC. Anyone that uh, plays Souls games, I always recommend the New Game Plus because you get to like go back and just say hi to all the stuff that took you like two hours on your casual playthrough and be like, I know what you are now. Like, I can't. I can do this first or second try, and that's kind of what that felt like. Like, I'm back to, to take revenge. <laughs> and you'll notice I bought, like, way more bolt paper than I need, and the reason I did that is to get rid of my insight, because the more insight you have, the smaller your beast meter is, which is the what determines how much damage you do. So we don't want to have... Basically, you want to have as little insight as possible. So right now I have zero and every time you kill a boss, you gain insight. So if I kept that, I think I had like 40 insight there. By the time I got to the end of the DLC, I would be doing significantly less damage. New meaning to ignorance is bliss, huh? Yeah. One of my favorite, like, Bloodborne mechanics doesn't really play into the speedrun, but, like, as you build up inside and stuff, you start to see different things in the world. And it's pretty cool. 
And it's one of those things you won't notice unless you play through the game multiple times, right? Because you'll you'll notice if you have more insight, you go through one area, some enemies will have different attacks, or you'll see certain enemies that you won't see if you have less insight, like you said. Yeah, it's kind of that play on like the Demon Souls uh, world tendency thing. Yeah. But- yeah, I love that when, once you build up the inside, especially on some of the towers, you start to see the giant things crawling on it, and you're like, was, was that always there? Was I not paying attention? Like, <laughs> I bought an extra blue elixir. Um, that's just my muscle memory, because I don't usually pick them up, so you usually buy two there. But now I have uh, access to an extra one that I can use for safety. So that's good. It's interesting they can't see you, but they're still shooting at you. Yeah. There's some areas like that where the the enemy patterns are just scripted. So as soon as you hit a certain point, like those Gatlin guns will just start going off. Um, regardless of whether or not you have the blue elixir active. And with this quit out, are we just uh, we resetting the enemy positions to make it easier to get in that door? Or Yeah. Okay. So you'll notice there's like a ton of enemies right around that corner. If you don't quit out, they're just blocking the door. And our last use of fire paper. Oh. So Ludwig is a beast type enemy. And when you kill beast type enemies with fire, occasionally they have different death animations Uh, and in this case Ludwig actually dies faster not that you kill him faster but that he literally has a faster death animation if you catch him on fire so it's pretty interesting I just love that he has like this this iteration of the the moonlight sword and he just whips it out (laughs) I remember the first time seeing that I was like that is a big sword (laughs) This is my favorite iteration of the Moonlight Sword. Just the way it looks when you have it blue, it looks so cool. And since we, uh, I think there's probably what, four or five something bosses left since we, we've we seen a lot of them. What is, uh, you know, maybe your favorite boss or the one that you like to fight the most or, or you find the most interesting? This is definitely my favorite boss casually. Um, the one I like to fight the most is probably orphan but without the cheese so we'll see and by cheese you mean just straight up like casual style or you mean a, a different strat than you would use from the speed run uh normally in the speed run you do a strat with the gunshots i think that's what i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna do the parry strats um but i much prefer to fight orphan with uh backstabs it looks so cool it's more of a legit feeling fight, which I know for speedrunning, it's not the biggest consideration, but I like legit fights a little bit more. As much re- as you can. If I remember correctly, there was rankings, because there's a million of these, for like the hardest bosses in all the Souls likes, and I think um, Orphan is the number one on most lists. For sure. Orphan is really tough. I think Elden Ring, some of Elden Ring's bosses probably have Orphan beat now <laughs> by a mile. Uh, like, Melania is pretty pretty rough. But yeah, Orphan's up there for sure. Chat's talking about how you're just casually chatting away <laughs> while slaughtering Ludwig. Yeah. <laughs> See, Ludwig is one of those fights that he's supposed to be hard, but it's a scripted fight. I actually messed it up, but I knew I messed it up. Uh, so I was able to recover at the end there. Uh, you're supposed to do a little bit more damage than what I did. And if I remember the lore, the plot, um, he's kind of uh, a tragic boss, right? Uh, you, you almost feel bad when you kill him, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Ludwig is, he's, uh, if you watch the cutscene, he sort of like regains his humanity at the end there. So it's one of those, it's one of those uh, fights where he used to be a, a good, honorable human, and then uh, the Scourge took him over and turned him into a beast. And the very end of the fight, when he stands up, that's when he kind of regains part of his humanity. Yes, for, for me, the the tragic boss in the series is the the wolf uh, in Dark Souls 1, uh, wolf, Grey Wolf Sif. 
Um, oh yeah. But, but Ludwig is kind of like uh, the Bloodborne almost equivalent of that, where like afterwards you feel kind of bad. Mm-hmm. Marie has another fight like that because she's yeah. just trying to pr- to. She's uh, trying to protect the secret, or her shame of the fishing hamlet. I was starting to get a little worried about that fall damage. I was like, that is a big drop. <laughs> this is what I was talking about with why you need so many vials, because I, I don't know how many I had, but I think you heal like four or five times in this area, so you need five vials to make it fast. Okay, our, our friends are back. And so there's a little bit of an RNG to this fight, right? As to where they spawn. Yeah, but uh, the first one will always spawn here. So as long as you kill him fast enough, it'll keep spawning here. But that guy will spawn in at some point, the one across from us. But this guy will keep spawning here. So we can camp this one. And what happens if you don't kill them fast enough? Do they spawn elsewhere and you have to run and chase them? Yeah, you'll get like three or four of them spawning in. It gets uh, out of hand very quickly. <laughs> it's interesting you didn't even have to deal with the far away one. Like that didn't matter for the health bar or anything. Yeah, like they all share a health bar. The far away one can occasionally hit you with magic attacks. So you got to be careful about that. But he uh, AFK'd there for me. So that was nice. Yeah, so far, so far, very clean. No big hiccups or anything. Thankfully. We'll of course, see how I've Maria now goes. commentator cursed you to oblivion, <laughs> and we'll see what cause does. <laughs> I kind of want to do the backstab strat now, just to because I was talking about how cool it is. Go and for I, I it. We got we got that. a little time. If you wanna, if you wanna try it one way, and then if it doesn't work out, do it the other. Like, we're here to have a little fun. This is one of those fights that always like reminds me of the whole like Virgil Dante type thing, like where you're fighting your someone who's sort of like you but not quite. And then that clean. happens. <laughs> that was very clean. Yeah, I don't know how many how many times I had to to go through that fight casually. <laughs> so. <laughs> That was one of those fights I was talking about where she doesn't have that much health, so she dies really quick, but um, she can add some memes which lose a lot of time. Because it's not quite a scripted fight. Like, that, the way it looked there is how it should look if it's a good fight but it can go wrong very quickly, like it did in my PV, because I have my splits up right now, and I just saw that I saved 10 seconds on that fight. So I must have lost a ton of time. Um, I don't really want to use the blue elixir now. So I'll run through this area with no elixir, which looks really scary, but it's typically fine. As all the ghosts fly out in the middle of the yeah. room. <laughs> this is the scariest part right here, these little fish dogs. But we got past them, so we're good. Still just random ghosts all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this skip is another instance of the slope quit out from Forbidden Woods. So you just do that, and now you're out of bounds. Once we spawn back in. Oh. So yeah, we've uh, I've already committed to doing the backstabs on Orphan, so hopefully I don't mess it up. Nah, it'll be fine. We have complete and utter <laughs> faith in you. This, uh, this skip is pretty cool. At the very least, it's not the, uh, the dagger, the poison dagger thing, which is... Nope. You know, far less interesting. 
Yeah, even the parry strat is, is interesting, more interesting than the, the throwing knives, but I, I just really like fighting him like this. Because it just looks so cool. I'm just going to be nice and quiet, so... <laughs> And there we go, first try. Woo! We're gaming. We're out here gaming. That was an intentional hit that I took there to bait his AI into doing a favorable attack, which is a pretty cool strat. I think that's the only time you intentionally take a hit for that type of reason. Yeah, that's not... I'm thinking to like other runs. That's that's one of the first times I've heard, like obviously damage boosting is a thing everywhere, but like yeah. to take the hit to manipulate an AI is interesting. I haven't heard of that one. So this is the item we need to uh, do the last boss of the DLC. Which we will head to now. Plenty of vials, not concerned at all. If I have, usually if I have over 10 um, entering the DLC. Oh, that's not the right thing to do. I'm just going to cheat. Sorry, I'm still looking at the doll. I'm just, I'm just thinking she has PTSD or something <laughs> over there in the corner. Like, oh no, he's back. I went to the wrong area, so I cheated. Don't tell the leaderboard moderators. <laughs> oh, is I'm that one it? of the leaderboard moderators? <laughs> is that one of the uh, the rules? You can't actually fully quit the game. Oh yeah, well you can, just not like in the way I used it there to cancel an animation. And now everything's on fire. So I bought. Uh, bloodstone shards there which is an upgrade material but i'm not actually going to use them the reason i bought them was for the same reason i was talking about where if you have too much insight your damage is lower and bloodstone shards are just one of the things that you can buy that allow you to um not have a prompt that tells you you're carrying too many things like if you have more than 10 pellets uh the game will tell you we've moved some of those pellets to storage it doesn't tell you that with the bloodstone shards, so you're just skipping that whole extra confirmation box. Just, you know, casual fireball down the hill there. A Souls game classic. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that, that sort of thing's in pretty much every one of them, like some sort of rolling ball. It, it's such an iconic moment in like the <laughs> first couple of Souls games is now like just in everything. If I run up a big hill like that, I just assume a fireball is coming. <laughs> oh, I missed. That's not good. Oh, that's terrible. This is now turned from scripted fight into whatever I can figure out to make this not slow. Hey, it wouldn't be perilous pass if there wasn't a little bit of danger, <laughs> right? A little bit of peril. <laughs> You're just trying to be a, a good sport and let them fight back a little bit. Okay, that's not how that fight is supposed to look, but uh, we did it, so. Yeah, that kind of, yeah. it's interesting. It's a lot like the other two 
in terms of like appearance, the other two beast uh, bosses, like the blood starred beast and the electric one, I forget its name, like kind of a similar, like this one's on fire, but same similar idea until you cut off half of him and he's crawling around. But, yeah, but. exactly. He has like the exact same design as cleric beast just on fire, which I find funny. Um, and if you do the fight correctly, he doesn't do the, the second phase where he loses the legs. And then he actually has the same death animation as Cleric Beast, which is interesting because you're not supposed to kill him in phase one like that. Mm. Um, but I guess they just, for whatever reason, decided to use the same animation. Well, seeing the second phase was definitely worth it. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll take the blame. I'll tell the, I'll tell everyone <laughs> it was scripted. We yeah. wanted to see it on camera. <laughs> If you do, if you know how to manipulate Lawrence's attacks, it's pr he's pretty simple. At least, definitely with this damage output, uh, you can break his limbs in sort of a scripted fashion where you do one after the other. Um, but yeah, I wasn't able to do the strategy that we normally do because I missed a hit on the first, the very first combo. And that's kind of the, the theme with a lot of bosses is if it has a scripted fight or a scripted strat, if you miss one hit, it's no longer scripted. So you have to improvise. That's the joy of uh, optimized games, boss. right? Yeah. You miss that optimization. It's all out the window now. <laughs> and I also lost like 30 seconds on that fight. So like that, if that happened in a run, it's just over if you mess up the scripted strat. I mean, not everything has to be a world record PB pace run. We can still enjoy yeah. the run with the, the 30 seconds. It's all good. That's why I enjoy uh, marathons and like hotfix, because you can you can get the the speed run experience without the the monotony of resetting over and over again. Yeah, I think that's one of the like important things to demystify with speedrunning that took me a long time to understand is like as excited as we get about every pixel perfect optimization of world records like the practice of being a speedrunner is a little different and slowly optimizing yeah. your pb and slowly learning and just always having that constant sense of progression versus perfection like i find that fascinating yeah and that's when speedrunning is fun for me or when it was the most fun. I still have fun with it, but when speedrunning reached its peak as far as enjoyment for me was when I was just starting out and you have those those really obvious progression milestones uh, where you're, you're progressing every day, every week, whatever, and you're improving really quickly. That stops once you're trying to get really good times because you can't, can't really progress as quickly when your times are better so like enjoy it while it lasts if you're someone that's just starting out speedrunning because progression gets really slow once you get a lot better this is another one of those uh those bosses that was interesting when they included it You typically don't kill that enemy that I just killed, but because he was kind of in a weird spot, I didn't want to get hit. And this skip looks like pretty cool. Like you're walking on top of this barrel and you quit out and it teleports you across the room, but it saves like two seconds. So I, I have elected to lose 20 seconds of real time <laughs> to quit out to save two seconds of in-game time. That's hey, the speedrunner's mantra right there. We're all about the swaggy stats here. Yeah. <laughs> and I would have done it anyway just because it de all the enemies and makes it easier to run back through this area. Because now all the dogs are, are gone. Yeah, that's the kind of boss nobody would ever die to. <laughs> Somebody said I would die to it twice. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite areas. Just aesthetically. 
It's very, uh, well, depending on where everyone lives, very seasonally appropriate to the northern yeah. hemisphere, at least. At least where I am and everything. I live in Canada. It's very snowy right now. Oh, wow, already. Okay. It's a it's actually pretty late for for our city. Uh, usually we would have had snow by now. Um, it's probably late October. Okay. Early November. So this is kind of like the nightmare before Christmas of Souls Likes. It can fit throughout <laughs> the seasons. It's a little Halloween. It's a little. It's yeah. a little end of year. It's very uh, Hogwartsy. For any Harry Potter fans. That's true. If, if we're thinking about the lore, yeah, there is a whole <laughs> kind of academy thing going on. Yeah. I actually died here yesterday. Somehow, like, look how slow these enemies are. They just kind of stand there and let you run past. Somehow I got, like, just absolutely murdered by one of them. They just went psycho on me. I find uh, whenever I'm on like PB pace for something, it's always something stupid like that. Like some <laughs> yeah. random enemy I've never died to in my entire life, like ruins the run. And I just, I just pause for like three minutes. I'm like, Did that really just happened. Yep. <laughs> hidden bookshelves or hidden ladders in bookshelves. Pretty cool. That is a tall ladder. It's uh, It almost makes you wonder if it would be possible in real life, some of the ladders in these games. Like, especially the one in the cave in Forbidden Woods. It's so long that, like, I don't think it would be physically possible to build a ladder like that and have it not fall. I mean, we, we also... The instant you have... tried to climb it, like... We also have the goat ladder of MGS3, right? The one that's like yeah. five minutes long. <laughs> it reminds me of those, um, not telephone workers, but the people that have to climb the like hundreds and hundreds of feet for, for mm -hmm. fixing whatever those things are. I think it's cell towers or something like kind yeah. of similar to that. The good attack. Okay. So he's the the source of all the ghosts we saw earlier. Probably not I'm making that up. I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> Just to be fun. We can make up our own lore. I mean that was I know this boss can be a bit problematic. That was smooth. That is a a scripted fight but also the stamina is really tight on it so it's kind of tricky it's tricky to to have enough stamina to do the backstab at the end there without getting knocked back by his aoe okay but if you wait too long then it's a little a little scary because he can start doing other attacks Dane over in chat is making me want to sing the Metal Gear song. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I can't sing. I won't make you all listen to that, but it's in my head now. And these are the, uh, the final two endgame bosses, right? Yes. I do like that Bloodborne kind of comes almost full circle because this is reminiscent of the gas coin fight and it's like hunter on hunter again. So it's, yeah. I like that there's kind of that beginning and end symmetry to it. Such a good game. Like a lot of the bosses are just super cinematic, which I think you don't find in a lot of the other Souls bosses. And then this just randomly pops out of the moon, so. And we're coming up on time here in a minute, right? Yep. That was the final boss. And as soon as we quit out after receiving the echoes, it'll be time. Time. That was it. 
That was the Bloodborne All Bosses Restricted category. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for showcasing that. We've got to, of course, uh, ask you, do you uh, have any shout outs, anything you want to say to the people out there? Do you want to tell them where they can follow you, find you, watch more um, of this great content, anything like that? All I want to say is uh, if you want to watch more runs like that, the Souls Charity Marathon is happening this weekend on the Souls Speedrun channel on Twitch uh, for a really good cause, Save the Children. Um, so yeah, check out if you want to see more Souls runs, some non-Souls runs. We uh, we do other runs on that marathon, but yeah, please stop by, say hello. Yeah, it's all, all for me. And we do have awesome. another run coming up, so that'll be fun. We we do have another run, uh, so so we do want to make sure everybody sticks around for that, for, for Jupiter Climb's run. Just before we go to break, I do want to have a, a couple of quick announcements. So I want to remind everyone that AGDQ 2025 will be live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, January 5th to 12th. And registration and hotel booking are now open, so make sure to visit gamesdonequick.com and check the AD, AGDQ 2025 important dates section to learn more. And also, GDQ's next all-women and Fem speedrunning event, Frost Fatales 2025, will be live from March 9th to 16th. You know, we're really bringing in the new year with a couple of major events, so make sure to visit gamesdonequick.com slash framefatales for more information on the event. But like we mentioned earlier, Jupiter Climb is going to do an amazing showcase coming up here after the break, so stay tuned, but we'll be right back. Bye-bye. Well, Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Perilous Paths here, a brand new show on GDQ Hotfix. My name is Cutie. If you're just now joining us, Perilous Paths focuses on Souls-likes, Roguelikes, and Metroidvanias. We just hit the first of those three with an amazing run from a hottie uh, playing but through Bloodborne. We're going to try to get to the other two genres here with a great run from Jupiter Climb. We're going to cheat a little bit to get both genres going. Uh, but before we get to that, if you are just joining us, remember if you missed out on any of our shows or events, whether that's this episode or anything else during the week, make sure that you can check out the VODs on youtube.com slash games done quick. And while you're doing that, Make sure you join the official GDQ Discord and add the hotfix role where you can keep tabs on upcoming events, talk with staff, and more. So use Discord and the Twitch chat for more information, and yeah, make sure to stay up to date on everything going on. But with that, I want to welcome, you know, Jupiter Climb, who needs no introduction. You've probably seen them before, but I'm going to give them one anyways, which is I was trying before the break to... Uh, to count up how many world records Jupiter has in various Castlevania games and categories. And it honestly took me so long to count, I didn't get a total before we made it back from the break. So that is all you really need to know. Uh, one of the best in the business. So Jupiter, welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you again for the invite. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, I don't want to oversell this. <laughs> But I think this is going to be one of the most amazing Metroidvania experiences people have seen. This is probably the single best fan game to come out of the Castlevania community. So really excited to show it off. Cool. So tell us, uh, this is a little bit of a, a specialty here, a little bit of a showcase. Tell us, you know, what would normally happen in this game and then maybe what we're doing that's a little bit different here in the reprise version. So Ari of Sorrow is one of the more popular Egavania titles. It came out on the GBA in 2003. It's kind of like Symphony of the Night. You make your way through the castle. You unlock new abilities to unlock new areas. You fight bosses. You level up. It is a more typical Metroidvania experience. This, however, is Aria of Sorrow Reprise, made by Xanthus, which takes Aria of Sorrow and transforms it into a roguelike. Okay. So so when we say transforms into a roguelike, for anyone who doesn't know what that might mean or how it might apply to this game, what does it what does it refigure? What does it do differently? Honestly, I think the best way to talk about that is just to show it off. Let's do it. So if you'd like, we can go ahead and get started here. Yeah? yeah, absolutely. Count us in whenever you're ready to go. Real quick, I'll just point out you've got four difficulties, which is already a big change from the regular game. We're gonna be playing on normal, a little bit more marathon safe here. The least okay, save on death. That's crazy. Yeah, that, that's another more hardcore <laughs> option, Will. Uh, just in case I die, this is a definitely a, a tougher hack, so we'll uh, 
try and play a little bit safe with the option where if I do die, we'll only go back about 10 floors or so. So, with that said, time is going to start in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Good luck, my friend. Okay. So already, there's a lot to talk about here. You get a free soul out of the gate. We'll talk to Hammer later. But I'm going to let Yoko here kind of explain the basics. So Dracula's castle is constantly changing. Kill enemies in 10 different rooms to unlock the boss door at the top of this room. Each boss defeated advances the castle. Explore different areas to find new abilities. So this is a 120 floor roguelike experience. Every 10 floors, we want to come back right here to fight a boss. But to advance the room counter, we have to defeat at least one enemy in each room. And you're going to notice if you've played this game before, a lot of these room layouts are totally custom. It's going to be in chests. So you never know what you're going to get. Bamboo Sword is awful. I'll use it for one room. I was, I was just thinking about, like, how, how viable is bamboo as a sword? It's reminding me of, like, the wooden sword in Ninja Gaiden, and you can slowly power it up over time. Yeah, it's about the same kind of tier. Now, what's interesting, you'll notice there's a little tilde next to the bamboo sword name. Anytime you see that, it means there's a change from the vanilla game. So here it's gone from useless to giving you an experience boost every time you kill an enemy. Hmm. So lots of balancing tweaks and changes to enhance the experience here. Okay, um, can I even get this? Maybe with bats. Nice. Okay, early backdash. This is good for roguelike speedruns. This is going to be our main form of movement for a while. Yeah, this is really, for anyone who watches Castlevania, like, very key movement is, is backdashing. We were talking about this on my stream the other day. How many Castlevanias do you even move forward in? <laughs> and of these Metroidvania types, the answer we came up with is one or maybe one and a half. All the rest, it's faster to move backwards, which is very funny. Yeah, there's always some mechanic like that. Like in Super Metroid, you have to jiggle your arm cannon a whole bunch. Like there's always something that, that kind of fleshes out the animations to make it just a little bit quicker. It's one of the reasons I love Castlevania so much. It's the opposite of what we sometimes jokingly refer to as a hold forward game, where in a lot of games, to move, you hold forward, which is fine, but it's a little bit less technical. In the Castlevania games, you're always pressing a lot of buttons. This is a very high APM game. Oh no, this is worth talking about. You'll notice I'm kind of slip sliding around here. <laughs> Makes it hard to control. There are unique effects added to certain rooms different physics or hazards, double HP enemies, for example. So that can spice things up. Now we're going to use this book I picked up. We've uh, cleared 10 floors, so it's time to go back here and fight boss number one, Creaking Skull. Okay, a classic. Easy. Every boss gives you a heal. Besides the orbs, the only way to heal is to use consumable items. So in typical roguelike fashion, HP matters, matters a lot. Now, you'll notice these little icons up top. These are soul icons. We've gotten both movement abilities from this area. So now we got to find something else to do. And with backdash and dive kick, I can open up the switch. Go somewhere else. That's really interesting. It tells you what you've already found in each area, so you don't have to kind of like memorize it. Yeah, the roguelike has gotten a ton of revisions over the years. It's been so amazing to see its development. Once again, big shout-outs to Xanthus, the genius who made this possible. Okay, so sometimes you'll find Hammer. This is the shopkeeper of the game. You can find this guy just chilling out certain rooms. Let me see if I can afford some of this. Um, let me sell this, this. Get uh, one healing item. So how come you kept the uh, the bamboo sword there? I, I thought it wasn't super useful. Or does it just not sell for very much? Yeah, we're going to see. There are situations where maybe if you're close to a level up, it could come in handy. 
I was told by the creator that I might have been underestimating it, so I'm going to take their advice. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some use out of it. Oh, low gravity, this is a fun effect. <laughs> Maybe not speedrun ideal, but... Ooh. Now, hammer is a part of the early game meta for this. This is one of those weapons you want to see as often as possible. I'll show you why. Here it says, plus 100% early kill. That means if an enemy is within range of dying within two hits, the next hit will kill, which is very nice. So it'll get double damage in certain situations. Now, what are the risks, this being a roguelike, if you were to die, what would be the penalty of that? Normally in a speed run, I'm guessing it's probably a reset, but like, do you lose a lot of these items? Do you start back at like level one? Uh, what what type of penalty are we looking at? What, what peril are we in to uh, paraphrase the show name? Yes, yeah, so the typical experience, the standard mode, it's a true roguelike, not a roguelite, where if you die, it's just over, straight up over. Time to start from the beginning, totally fresh seed. However, there is an option to make things a little bit more accessible. Oh my God, hang on. This is one of my absolute favorites. You can hold jump to bounce. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, to make things more accessible, there's an option we're using here where if you die, you'll uh, start back with everything you had at the, uh, like the most recent checkpoint, which is the previous boss you defeated. Speaking of our next boss fight, floor 20, going to be Mansicore. Okay. And so these bosses are always set. This part is not randomized. Exactly. It's always in a predetermined order, which is good because, you know, we love a challenge here, but can you imagine if at level four I ran into Julius? Well, I think uh, I'm not quite leveled up enough for that, so... Okay, so there is no... This part's predictable. There's no, like, level scaling to your level or anything like that. It's just whatever pops up, it's kind of scripted. It's going to be the level it's going to be. That kind of thing. Exactly. All right, next ability, another new area here. So Gallimoth is interesting. This opens up an ability to quick swap between weapons. Um, but I'm going to stick with the hammer for now. Imagine if you could yep. just pick up that axe. Oh, it's funny you mentioned that. There actually is a random axe drop from the Minotaur. And if you get that, it's super good. But uh, no luck this time. Now, what are we doing here? You mentioned Ninja Gaiden earlier. Here's the wind effect from Ninja oh, Gaiden. Yeah. Now, in these rooms, they kind of split off into multiple rooms. What you can do is go into one kill an enemy to increase the room count, then go back and try a, a different route. Are the special like effects... You want to speed things along slowly. Are the special effects random, or are they, you know, specific to certain rooms or certain types of rooms? Oh, yeah, they're, uh, they're random as well, so you never know what you're going to get. Just waiting to see if you get an axe off of him or not. A uh, cut all has got a backstab effect to where if you're behind the enemy, it'll deal uh, effective damage, in this case, double damage. So that's pretty good. But again, hammer is um, going to be our best for a while, unless I get a drop right here. Actually, I've got a good feeling about this one. No. Oh. Well, we tried. We tried. This is nice, though. Uh, Ghost Dance is a pretty good yellow. Increases our luck stat. Fun fact, in the vanilla game, luck does absolutely nothing. Thankfully, that's been fixed here in the roguelike, but if you play Aria yourself, don't worry about luck. It is uh, all placebo. There's quite a few games where, like, luck or one of those stats, like poise or something, ends up being placebo. Oh, Ran random Quetzalcoatl on the stairs there. Quetzalcoatl is one of the most aggravating enemy types, as you might imagine. The way it, um, well, that unpredictable movement pattern is uh, tough to deal with. Also pretty strong. I like how that one's right, so called the Windy Room. So our most recent progression room. here. I'm, so I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I said I like how that one's called the Windy Room, but it didn't have the Windy Effect. So I did grab Skula in that uh, 
that room earlier, which means what I'm gonna do here is this. Feed the cow. Warp back. And now next time we can go underwater with uh, Skula. Okay, boss number three is, I believe, Great Armor. Yes, indeed. Let's see what I got here. Um, we've gotten a, a few better souls. Let's try out Merman, which has gotten a big buff. It's got a proper full screen attack now. I can play the super safe if I want. It looks like he's guarding a, a lot of the attacks. Is there like a, a specific thing uh, for that, or it's just kind of poke the feet until they die? For great armor, it's all about spacing. Uh, if you try and use projectiles, those will be negated. But for regular attacks, if you're uh, too far away, it just won't count. So you got to get in close. Now, I love this part. Uh, in Aria, Skula is something you normally have to equip. But in the roguelike, it's automatic. It becomes like any other ability soul, which is a huge quality of life improvement. And that is, that is the first boss just hanging out there in the corner. It is, yeah. Uh, bosses one through five will become regular enemies as the roguelike goes on. Final guard, that's nice. We saw um, a little bit of Bloodborne earlier. This is the Aria Harry right here. Okay. Very tough to use, a little bit expensive, but I'll try and make it work a little bit. And so are we fighting different enemies for a specific purpose? Is that to level up, to get drops? Um... Like so, uh, so yeah. Take a look at the uh, the number on the left side underneath my HP and MP bar. You'll see it's 34 right now. I'm gonna hit this Valkyrie. Now it goes up to 35. You have to defeat one enemy per room for the room to quote unquote count. And oh, Valkyrie's a nice random drop here. Let's take that. That's a really smart system. It prevents you from just like not engaging with the enemies at all. Once again, kind of like how in Bloodborne, there was a lot of just running away. Totally valid strat, but here, you've got to engage uh, at least a little bit. Now, we're going to upgrade our weapon to the S-Stock, which has got a pierce effect. <laughs> if you hit an enemy right outside of its attack range... What is going on in that mirror? I'm sorry. <laughs> we can't just gloss past oh. that. What is that? Uh, that guy is trouble. That's a, that's a scary enemy. Does he, does he hop out of the uh, mirror, or what's going on oh, Absolutely. There? Okay. And they hit you with a sword, so... Hmm, clearly not bad. And here's Slide, good. I think we're about ready to leave this area. Uh, here we go. So I'm going to warp back. Actually, hang on, what's this? You yeah, let me warp back here. And we'll grab uh, one more room clear from the left side. Nice. Alright, so this is not normally a boss in the regular game, but it is a boss in Boss Rush. So they've uh, re-included it into the roguelike. It's a pretty good fight at a low level, honestly. You can see Valkyrie, despite being very expensive, is so worth it. Really excellent damage. Also, Holy Elements. Nice no-hit. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Almost. <laughs> we'll count it. All right, so next up, we got Slide, so free high potion. How's my healing looking? Oh, it's looking excellent. Yeah, we got plenty of healing. Go over here. Now we enter the study. Mm -hmm. 
Partisan's all right. You want to always pick up weapons, by the way, even if you're happy with your current loadout. The more weapons of each type you collect, the better the item pool becomes. So it starts out with stuff like Bamboo Sword, Cuddle, and it'll end up getting us stuff like Claim, Final Sword, you know, the, the best weapons in the game. So the more you pick up, the better. It also applies to armor. And that's an interesting change from a lot of things like Slay the Spire or other things where maybe you want to minimize what you pick up. So tell me about it. I'm not a uh, Slay the Spire expert. What's the deal in that game? Oh, a lot of times in like card games or some other things where there's roguelike elements, if you pick up, for example, if you unlock too many things in a game that has drops, you end up getting guns or, or weapons or things dropped that maybe you don't want and aren't helpful. So you try to only unlock you know, for example, in like Dead Cells or something, only unlock what you actually want or need. And so it's interesting dynamic that this actually shrinks the pool so you want to unlock everything. I see, exactly. So it's interesting how it's a little bit different. Different takes on the concept. So far, so good with uh, these floors here. I'm a little bit low on HP, but like I mentioned before, I got plenty of healing. And here we go. Now we have access to flight. I can just press the L button. We'll soar on up into a windy room, how appropriate. So what happens if you do that high jump, but you do it in the bounce room? Do you get like an extra ricochet or something? Well, thankfully you don't bounce off of the ceiling, only the floor. Otherwise you might end up in like a, a portal type situation, <laughs> which is the loop. Yeah, you saw where I was going through. I was wondering if you could get, like, locked into something there. Now, much like Great Armor, this guy's got uh, a defensive effect if you're not spacing properly. So you gotta get in close. I'm gonna try out Curly here. This is a transformation rush soul. Oh, okay. Just the worst RNG I've ever seen. So much for that idea. If he had walked four, that would have been good damage. So he didn't uh, didn't seem that dangerous. What is the main risk with that as a boss? Is it just like if you walk into him, he has more of a hitbox, or are you so smooth with the movement, he's not really getting his attacks out? Yeah, I would say um, awkward hitbox, uh, very bulky, takes longer to kill than most bosses, relatively speaking. And I didn't get a couple of attacks that are scary, like if he starts spitting rocks at you, that can lead to some combos. Oh. Anyway, we can just leave now. This is interesting. So I got Bat, which means there's nothing else valuable up here. If I go back up, uh, you'll notice both of the, uh, the dots have been cleared. So let's see, is there anything else? I, I think we've gotten everything. And since all right, so this is going to open up a new phase of the roguelike, where we have all the abilities we need. The goal now is just to clear floors ASAP. Since, so I'm, go back here. since I'm keeping an eye on chat for you, I just wanted to let you know that Xanthus is hanging out with us today. Hi, Xanthus. Well, we've been giving Xanthus credit for a lot today. Let me give uh, a little bit more credit. <laughs> Xanthus has introduced this new item called the Karen's Obble. This guarantees the next enemy you kill will drop their soul, which is a genius idea. It's so good, in fact, I really hope that's a part of the uh, the next Castlevania game we get, where you use an item, you get a guaranteed drop. I think that could be uh, an official idea, honestly. What, what was that missile thing that just flew across the screen there? Oh, that was the, uh, the Skyfish anime. Oh, of course. What else would it be? <laughs> One of the more secretive enemies in Aria. You have to use a specific soul to slow it down to have a chance to defeat it. Oh, let's go. Okay, so this hack... Um, um, excuse me, the... Um, yeah, the Kunitsune is a brand new weapon in this fan game. And um, it's so cool because every time you deal damage, you gain a little bit of MP back. This is one of the best weapons in the roguelike. Uh, normally, it's just some, like, mid-grade katana, kind of unexceptional. 
here. It's got a backstab effect. It restores MP for you, so it's a great complement to any of your uh, better soul abilities. So we're probably going to be using this one for uh, most of the rest of the game, I think. I like how Persephone, uh, I think that was a curtsy as soon as you walked in the room, just said, hello. <laughs> hmm, what do we got here? Scarf? Um, I think we'll take this. Let's go with the HP for now. All right, next boss is going to be Headhunter. That's, that's a really interesting boss design. The head comes off and then it transforms into something else. Yeah, Headhunter's one of my favorites. Three phases. This is the final and toughest phase. And you can see how good Kunitsuna is. I've been able to kind of spam Valkyrie here. And is it always the same three phases, or is there any randomness? Because I see there's, you know, 200 heads in the background. Like, does it pull any heads out It would out of be that? so cool if there were, like, 10 phases it could cycle through randomly. But no, it, it's the same three every time. But uh, I think it's a good idea for, like, uh, a future iteration of Headhunter. It's got some potential. Now, this room, um, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to leave those chickens be, and we're going to go somewhere a little bit more friendly. Now, I'm thinking about the best spot to use the obble I have. I'm going to try and hold out for a particular enemy called the Nightmare. Arguably the best red soul in the game. Actually, maybe Hammer's got something. Hammer can sell souls, but nothing this time. And we, Another new roguelike feature. And we talked a little bit when we started the game about there's uh, there's four difficulties. What are the, the main differences be between the difficulties? Is it like enemy health? Is it your health? How much damage you take? Anything like that? Basically, all of the parameters are increased. Uh, but there's something even more than that. Um, on hard mode and nightmare mode, the longer you take, the more difficult the game becomes. So on normal mode... Enemies have their standard stats, but on hard mode, every like eight minutes, I think, four minutes, something like that, everything goes up. HP, defense, attack, you name it. And on nightmare mode, on top of that, the bosses all get special room effects. Like here, for example, it's a bouncy room. Imagine fighting Headhunter in a bouncy room. <laughs> so that's a nightmare exclusive, and uh, it's hilarious. Well, if we end up... Uh, it is so easy to die on Nightmare Mode. If we end up with a little bit of extra time, since you and Ahadi are a little too good at your jobs, frankly, would you want to showcase off a little bit of that? I've got nothing but time. I would be happy to do that. That'd be awesome. I'd love Although to see like, case, some I of the changes. Although in that case, I cannot guarantee uh, marathon safety, but as a bonus, yeah, great idea. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd be interested to see like some of those dynamics and what the differences look like. Um, especially if anyone is watching this and is interested in giving it a run and checking it out, like being able to see, like, okay, there's there's levels, there's steps up to this, there's more fun to be had. Like, I'd love to see a showcase of that too, if we have some. I'm really thinking about just getting Lightning Doll here. It's, this is the second best red. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I've got two albums at this point. The next time I see either Nightmare or Lightning Doll, We'll go ahead and guarantee one of those drops. So this is one of the coolest boss fights right here. Um, everyone loves death in Castlevania. This is one of the better death fights in the series, I would say. Yeah, I love that you attack the Psy instead of him directly. Curly should be good for the start of phase two. I just love that the big side is shooting out little baby side. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, nice damage there. Yeah, good stuff. So we've got 50 more floors to go, still deathless. After death, love to see it. And so as... Let me ask you... Oh, go ahead. I, out of curiosity, what is your, uh, what's your favorite Castlevania game? My favorite? Um, I've got to admit, I haven't played nearly as much of the series as some of you. Uh, but I, my introduction was kind of like Bloodstained. I really enjoyed that. And I actually found out about it because David Hayter's in it. Um, so I was like, oh, great. Snakes in a Castlevania type game. I guess Egovania is more appropriate. But like, so that's probably my favorite. I just, I, I love the, as you can tell, the gothic theming and the, and everything. So I really enjoyed that one personally. And I know you were on that one Blood too. Bloodstained is uh, one of the all time greats, I'd say. Yeah, uh, for, for reference, when I originally, uh, to the reference to the audience, because you know this, when I originally reached out, I asked if you wanted to do Bloodstained, just because it is one of my favorites. And then you suggested this, which I think is an amazing fit and a great cheat for us to get, you know, all three genres in the first episode. So I love this showcase. See, I went ahead and used the novel on Lightning Doll. This thing is the Palpatine soul. It is one of the very best. Uh, excuse me. Hey, is that consistent? Well, this is a typical disc armor moment right here. Let's just, let's all appreciate this right here. Very cool. Anyway. I like but, that uh, in this episode, no no dolls are safe, whether they're up, level up dolls or lightning dolls. We kill all the dolls in this episode. Bird gang, not bad, but now that we have Lightning Doll, we want to stick with Kunitsuna. Give us more MP to work with. But yeah, if you like Bloodstained, there's really, um, there's so many great games like it to choose from. A couple years ago, we had the uh, Advanced Collection. Now we have the Dominus Collection, the DSVania Trilogy. Excellent collection, by the way. Definitely recommend that one. And one of the collections, I think, was just the free game of the week on the Epic Store, and I picked that one up. I think it has like six or eight games or something in it. So I am looking forward to going through that. Yeah, the Anniversary Collection is another one to mention. That's the more classic style of Castlevania. Oh, come on. I do remember I ran, I think it's Super Castlevania 4, and there's a level where there's just spikes coming down from the ceiling, and it took me the longest time to figure out you could just kind of crawl under them versus having to time it. Um, so that's that's my Castlevania moment of I got super frustrated trying to figure that out. Now, I'm going to play this a little bit irresponsibly. Yes. I'm going to just be taking damage on purpose here. Because otherwise, what you have to do is kind of follow Legion along through this whole room. But if you do it like this, I can get more hits in, get more MP back, and just spam up Palpatine. It's going to be faster, but i got to be a little bit careful with my HP. going to burn some consumables here. So is this kind of... Uh, the boss's entire stick floating around and, and having little people run at you? Yes. <laughs> yes, that is the uh, the Legion classic. Oh, this is actually a little bit better here. Let's go with this. Oh. Okay, almost. Nice. <laughs> it's just like a robot worm inside there. <laughs> yeah, Legion is um, definitely one of the more out there avant-garde Castlevania designs. Then look at this. What is that thing? That That's, uh, on my screen it's pretty small, but it looks like a gummy bear to me. I don't know, that's my first reaction. <laughs> this game's got some disturbing boss designs. I will say, for any uh, Bloodborne fans who have decided to stick around, first of all, thank you. And second of all, if you like insane boss designs, uh, we've got one of the all-time greats coming up in uh, 20 floors here. 
Okay. Probably the most disturbing design in Castlevania, actually. Got a little preview for you. Yeah, I really thought the theme of this episode was just going to be kind of gothic horror or whatever, but now I think it's the dolls. I think that's what we're going with. If there's a doll in the game, it's got to go. The little hidden subtext we weren't planning for. Another obble here. Um, I could show this off. This is more of a speed run thing, but you know what? Why not? Just to show the people some cool uh, roguelike movement tech. What you can do, and for uh, record times, this is absolutely required, is you can get a Medusa ASAP, and then you have this equipped. I have no MP healing, huh? Okay. Hang on. You can do a little something like this. This is a good room to show it off. Do a little something like this. <laughs> okay. And uh, that is very fast. It's almost like a, like a zip, but not quite. Yeah, Medusa lets you hover in the air and then combine it with a dive kick, and uh, it's pretty broken. Basically required. So speaking of... Or, uh, good speed run times. Speaking of, like, record runs and speed runs, like, how... Obviously, we're in a marathon setting. What we get is what we get. But how reset-heavy would you say this would be, or how likely is it that, you know, any given run would have a chance at, at doing well? So that's a good question. There are two different categories uh, for difficulty. There is a set seed category where you uh, you pick a seed ahead of time. Ooh, Maramasa. I might have to switch this. It's really good. Think about it. But yeah, there's a set seed category where you pick the seed ahead of time. And there's a random seed, which is what I prefer, where it's brand new every time you play the game. For random runs, it's not that reset heavy because um, you don't have enough information to go by until you get to floor like 30. But yeah, at that point, if it's looking a little bit rough, you'll just reset and try again. If you're looking for stuff like uh, Kaiser Knuckle, Early Medusa, Flame Necklace, which is a fun uh, risk reward accessory. The lower your HP, the faster you move. So that's got a lot of potential. Yeah, that's interesting. That's like a glass cannon build, but for movement. I'm not sure I've, I've seen that one before. Did that say the enemy was a human, or did I read that wrong? Oh, I must have missed it. So yeah, for this one, we'll go with uh, Muramasa. Katanas are excellent versus Bloor. You can get multi-hits in like this. Poor guy only has one. Oh, there's the other eye. Okay. Now, in 10 floors, we're going to get a, uh, a final movement upgrade. It's going to be uh, our main form of movement for the remainder. So let me try and show off Medusa a little bit more while I can. This is definitely right. very cool. In vanilla, it does not work this way. It's only good for staying in place. So are the movement upgrades kind of set to different sets of floors? So like you always know you're going to get bash, backdash earlier. You're always going to get, you know, some of the moves at certain spaces and you kind of plan for that. Or is it just random and you so, just hope you get one of the good ones early? Yeah, that's one of the things I like the most about the rogue. Like it's not set. It's random every time. So you want to get stuff like backdash ASAP. But if you don't get backdash immediately, oh my God. Then you can maybe get Dive Kick early, or maybe get a Medusa early. So there's lots of options, but it's not set in stone. If it was, I think it would get a little bit too predictable, you know? I think I might just warp back now. I'm trying to figure out why this chat one. keeps saying choo-choo. <laughs> Is that something that you understand? 
Uh, no, that is oh, okay. uh, not an inside joke I'm in on. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, you never know if, if that's like a community thing or something, but uh, interesting, whatever's going on over there. Another Kunitsuna. I see, this is the uh, the crazy boss I mentioned. This is Graham. Graham wants to be Dracula. Oh, hang on, what am I doing? One more floor. Hang on. One more. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. Apparently we had a hype, tra a hype train in the streets. Well, that, you know, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> well, hey, thank you so much, everybody, for the, uh, the Castlevania roguelike hype train. You don't get to say that every day. And, you know, speaking of which, um, you do, uh, for everyone out there, your subs, your Prime Gaming subs, your gift subs, bits, everything that's cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel does help support Games Done Quick Hotfix. So if you are enjoying speedruns, you know, consider subscribing to this channel to get access to our emotes, chat with those subscribers during our replays, and, you know, everything else that's fun that's going on. We really appreciate having you here. Just want to throw that in there with the hype train going on but did not mean to, to take away from the boss here, so take it back. No, 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 perfect timing. Phase one is uh, typical Dracula stuff. This guy's a wannabe Dracula, but he's got some of the same moves. Teleport, fireball, teleport, fireball. Uh, I got an interesting weapon during the hype train. Um, I I'm gonna use the gun for phase two. The gun, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use the gun. I mean, you did say this was the Bloodborne boss, right? So you gotta use a gun on it. That is a gun. <laughs> that is a big gun. Alright, so with this phase, the more you look at it, the worse it gets. I, uh, I can't believe they put this on the GBA. Eh, I've seen worse. <laughs> okay, there's eyes on the back of the hands. That's cool. This is actually giving me, like, Final Fantasy vibes a little bit. Because of the angel wings, I think. And so is this kind of just like a cycle lock nice. going left and right? Uh, a little bit, it's a little bit random every time, but that was a nice clean fight. And now, here's our final movement upgrade, Panther. This is going to make these final 20 floors go by a little bit faster than normal, but... Uh, greater speed comes with the downside, which is it's easier to run into things, and at this point, the enemies are about as strong as they're going to get, so... You don't want to be careless. Eagle, let's go! Alright, I love this one. This is my favorite weapon in the game. So, you know... Spoilers, uh, Soma is Dracula, right? This is very important to the game's plot. Uh, Soma is the reincarnation of Dracula. So it would make not much sense if Soma was able to use Excalibur. So instead, what he does is he uh, just keeps it in the stone, uses it like this. That's a smart <laughs> little loophole, I think. So in terms of the, if we're talking about the lore of the game, what is the rationale then for Soma trying to go through the castle if it's obviously not to fight Dracula? Is it that he wants his castle back to become Dracula? Or? Well, that would be an interesting version. Like he knows what's going on and uh, he's okay with it and he's ready to become the Dark Lord. <laughs> Thankfully, it's um, he's a good guy. Okay. He's uh, brought here against his will. At first, he wants to protect Mina, who's his childhood friend. But um, against his own wishes, he uh, begins the process of absorbing enemy souls and becoming Dracula. And then you gotta stop it. Which is why the final boss is, um, in a way, the castle itself. It's chaos, which is the manifestation of evil. It's gonna be the final boss of the game. Okay, I'm, I'm getting uh, Strangers of Paradise uh, flashbacks from that. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but chaos is, is the main enemy and they call out the chaos like every five minutes in the cutscenes. <laughs> I think Soma Cruz does want to kill Chaos. Now for this one, let's shake things up a little bit here. Oh, we got some fun souls. Let's go Legion for Julius. Stick with Panther. Nice. 
Sports. So is this kind of the uh, the classic mirror boss that kind of has a similar move set and everything to you? I've seen a couple of dive kicks and stuff, slide kicks there. Yeah, this is um, it. Kind of became a staple uh, ever since Symphony of the Night, where it's Alucard versus Richter, the Belmont versus the non-Belmont. Um, you got this one. You have a similar rematch in Dawn, which is arguably even better. You've got something similar in Portrait. It, it, it's a really cool concept. Always one of the very best boss fights in whatever game you're talking about. This is uh, one of the highlights of Aria right here. Oh, careful. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure how dangerous to the that final was. 10 floors. I wasn't sure if that was like hardcore focus time or not. So I was like, just shut up, just let him do his thing. <laughs> With Julius, you always want to focus a little bit. It's a tough one. Ooh, lubricants. Um, no. Well, all right. So this is another risk reward soul. The lower your HP, the better your stats become. And you can combine stuff like lubricant plus. For example, where was that uh, punch weapon? Poison Fist also increases the damage as you lose HP. So you can get some crazy damage numbers going. But again, we want to play a, a little bit conservative. For the sake of the hot fix. Maybe we'll do this a little bit. I just always love all the movement tech in Castlevania games. Like, we started off just kind of doing stuff, then we got the back dash, and now we're blinking around and high jumping and kicking places and, like, just anything we want to do. Like, I, I, I love the kind of progression. I know, right? It. It's so great. You get the whole um, Aria Metroidvania experience condensed into, like, 45 minutes to an hour. That might as well be the definition for, like, all speedrunning, right? You get the whole experience condensed into an hour. All right, so at this point, I don't want my HP any lower than this. But we are going to get some uh, good damage going for the final boss. If I take any more hits, I'll heal. But let's try and use Lubricant just a little bit. And so at what point are you in one-shot territory using this? On normal mode, probably anything uh, 150 or less is dicey. Depends on the attack. That all looks good. Lubicant, let's go with uh, Giant Bat here for evasion. And Lightning Doll. Okay, final boss. Okay, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> well, at the start of the fight, our souls are sealed by these three rotating statues. So I can't use red, blue, or yellow until I break them. So you're gonna notice once this yellow statue's gone, my damage is gonna go up. Speaking of Bloodstain, this reminds me of the final boss in Bloodstain too. Not Bloodstained the sequel, but just Bloodstained. I can see some similarities, the two phases. By the way, time is going to be coming up pretty soon here. The damage is high enough where I can just avoid the eyes and focus on the core. Every eye you defeat lowers the defense, but our attack stat is good enough. Okay, that's time. Awesome. So that was the Aria of Sorrow roguelike experience on normal mode. But if we still got time, I'm happy to show off a little bit of nightmare mode. Absolutely. Uh, what we'll probably do is maybe go to a quick break, give you a little bit of a rest, and then we'll come back. Uh, we'll hang out a little bit and uh, check that insane mode out. What do you think? Sounds good. Cool.
Well, with that, uh, let's go ahead and take like a short little break. We'll be right back or while we get set up for for the extra difficult mode, see a little bit of spiciness. Uh, we won't have time probably to finish. Well, maybe if you can do it in 40 minutes, but we probably won't have time to finish it. Uh, but stick around. You're definitely going to want to see what happens when you uh, crank this game up a little bit. Hello everyone and welcome back to Perilous Paths. My name is Cutie and we are here with Jupiter Climb. Uh, we did not have this on the original uh, dance card for this evening, but because Jupiter and Ahadi did such an amazing job on their runs, we have a little bit of extra time. And Jupiter has very kindly, very graciously agreed to do a little bonus run for us on what this game looks like on Nightmare Difficulty. So with that, I'll turn it back over over to Jupiter. Maybe tell us a little bit about, you know, the differences between what we just saw and this new difficulty and, yeah, what we can expect to see. Yeah, this is a great option because the goal of Nightmare Mode is not to win. The goal of Nightmare Mode is to survive. This run might go 40 minutes. It might go 15 minutes. I'll try and keep it going as long as I can, but it's... Um, it is a big increase in terms of the challenge. So with that, we're going to start. I'll go ahead and say, yeah, delete save on death. Let's do it for real. True nightmare mode. Three, two, one, go. So I, I have to just go now. You'll notice there are now two numbers on the UI. The left one is the room number, like we saw earlier. And the right one is the difficulty modifier that goes up periodically the longer I take. So, um... I gotta hustle. Oh, it's Bamboo Sword again. <laughs> oh my god. However, Gravekeeper's good. We can hustle. Again, the faster we go, the relatively easier things remain. That's important. I actually oh, love some that armor up here. from like just a speed run category in general. Like you get rewarded for going faster. Yeah, from a design point of view, it's always that difficult question. What's to prevent the player from just playing lame? Whether you're talking about fighting games or 2D action platformers, same deal. It's hard to avoid people playing lame. So this is a good system, I think. Yeah, I think it's the same idea behind, like, Spelunky, right? It has that thing that comes after you if you spend too long in the level. This has been a really bad start in terms of the weapons. Hopefully it gets better. You'll notice we've already seen more effects than normal. Uh, enemies are way bulkier, they hit harder. We've only got, what is like, 160 HP? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> nice epic combo. Oh, okay, yep, <laughs> yep, just, oh, okay, yep, yep. That's a nightmare mode moment right there. Good weapon, though, okay, hang on. Don't want to give up on this too early. So is it adding more enemies to the rooms too, or is that my imagination? Because I see I see these things spawning in. So I think it's the same number of enemies, but swarms are more likely to happen, like in that case. And enemy swarms can definitely lead to combos. Nice. Oh, we have a hammer already? Oh my god, hang on. No. I'm out of healing. Oh, this is going to be heartbreaking. I really want to keep this hammer. Yeah, the amount I talk is directly proportional to the size of your life bar. If you have a little bit more wiggle room, I'm going to talk a little bit more. But when it's low, I'm just going to be like, okay, I'm going to let him do his thing. All right, well, I'm going to say this. If we can get past Creaking Skull and get the orb, I'm going to use the potion here. Yeah, that's the right call. Never mind. All right, this run's uh, a good start, actually. Hammer kind of bailed us out. Let's switch to that and warp on out of here. You can't buy healing on Nightmare, by the way. Okay, so it's only, it's only what you find in the orbs. Oh. Okay, so every boss has got an effect. Look at this. There's a crow following me around that I cannot damage. <laughs> but it's just kind of standing there. Yeah, I got a little bit lucky. Yeah, I was just about to move. That could have been much worse. I like how the crow is still there. 
Okay, so dive kick next up is going to be this way again. And so does which which direction you go depend on which ability you get there? It does, absolutely. Certain rooms open up. Like, if you want to go underwater, you have to have Skula. If you want to go off the candle, you have to have Dive Kick, stuff like that. I want this. Nice. It's a boosted jump. Very good. Hammer. There's just no point. <laughs> Sorry, Hammer. Oh my god. Increased knockback. This way. Uh, Chad is asking if the uh, the floors are static throughout the runs, or if they get reorganized if on different seats. They get reorganized every time. Man, Tiny Devil's doing 25. Okay, no healing. Uh, two more floors. We're getting there, but uh, this is dicey. He's going to take this. Okay, that'll work. I'm going to grab this weapon. Go back. You know, Whip Sword's interesting. It might be worth playing this a little bit safe. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Let's go with the Belmont build here. What is a, And what the is... effect is... No potions. Hey, perfect. Because I don't have any. <laughs> I was going to say, it said you were cursed for a little while. What did that do? Oh, I broke a candle and got some gold. And the effect of that room was cursed gold. So a little bit unfortunate. Perfect fight. Okay. This run is honestly going better than I was expecting. Yeah, we, we passed the five minute threshold, so now we gotta try to make the 15, and if we get to 15, we're gonna go for that 40 you talked about earlier. All right, so thankfully there is a little bit of healing just lying around. So we got a potion and a high potion. We got one, I think it's a super, once I get Undine, and that's it. No more freebies at that point. Oh god, bouncy room and a flea man. Is that enemy bouncing nice. because of the room? Oh no, that one is actually just vanilla behavior, but uh, kind of a good fit. Yeah. It's on theme. So does the room affect- No, no, no. Speaking of bouncing, oh my- Had to be a Katsugatl. Is it only affecting you or uh, does it affect the enemies too? Only Soma. So, so Katsugatl is just like that normally. <laughs> Exactly, if you can believe it. Got him. Slippery ice theme. Alright, so here I'm hoping to find either flight or a double jump, probably double jump. Oh, this is a cool effect. Every enemy petrifies when this one's enabled. I like how like, flying armor is not the worst. I like the cat that just kind of runs away. You know, it's funny. If you happen to get the student witch soul, you can actually summon cats yourself. Pretty good. Okay, that's really nice. That's an excellent armor upgrade. A lot of defense, a little bit of offense as well. platforms uh, going, the ones that were going straight up there. So it's a pretty big room. That can take me to different items. 
and uh, different exits, but I don't think those are very useful. So I prefer to just hustle and uh, go to the next room in that case. There are different routes. I know from a fact watching other people who speedrun the roguelike, we all have slightly different approaches. Because while the items are not fixed, the kinds of items are fixed. So for example, that's always a yellow canister. Oh nice, first try. Oh succubus, oh my god. Okay, this has been super nerfed compared to vanilla, but it's still healing every time you hit an enemy. Uh, this run's got a chance to win. Okay. Let me not speak too soon, though. No? <laughs> I'm going whip sword again here. I almost never did this. I'm going to skip the orb here. Every second counts. Did notice the difficulty right, so now what? Uh, timer notched up one right there. So what is that going to do for us now that it's at one instead of zero? Everything gets a buff. Offense, defense, HP. Everything is stronger now. I like the little plus two over your head every time you hit them. In vanilla, it's plus five which is so good. Oh my god. That is a slow hammer. Oh my god. Ah, just get me out of here, thanks. <laughs> Alright, hammer, what do you got? I'm gonna give you one chance. Um, ooh, I mean, he's got hobbles. Hang on. The whip sword, keep the hammer. And I can't afford it yet. Hopefully next time he still has an novel I can buy. Well, that's not good. All right, let's get out of here. No air control is what I call classic Vania mode. You cannot control your jump midair. So much like Castlevania 1, when you jump, you are committed to the jump. Oh my god. Yeah, I do have to say, uh, when going back to some older games that don't give you, like, air control and don't give you, quote-unquote, coyote time, like, the difference is unreal in how, how those make you feel. Oh, are you healing off of the, um, the candelabras or the, the lantern things there? Yeah, for whatever reason, succubus also applies to candles. So, I mean, hey, you know, more healing. <laughs> plus two, plus two. Not bad. They're herbal candles. They're good for you. Oh, my God. Uh, it was close. Got an accessor here, Crimson Cloak. Not bad. Uh, probably the best yellow I can find here for the moment is either Triton or Lubicant. Suchi Noko, okay, that's something. That means uh, lower shop prices, so maybe I can afford that hobble now. Get okay, Skula. And are there any items throughout this game that kind of vent death or save you from a death? So something like a, an Ankh or something that would reincarnate you without you losing, like coming back at that same spot, or is it just, there's nothing like that. If you mm -hmm. die, there's no protection. If you die, there's nothing you can do about it. So, uh, very scary. All right, I'm gonna go no heal here. Every potion is precious, just gonna move on. Uh, cursed, okay, cursed manner I can live with. I'm not, I'm not planning to take damage here. Need something better than this. Um, no, I really don't have very many good reds right now. I like how you basically full healed off of the boss. Yeah, 
You can see why I got so excited when we got the Succubus Soul. It's uh, definitely top tier. Okay, nice. Oh, I got a Rahab Sword random drop. Okay. This is a really good high tier weapon that I've gotten like 40 floors early. Oh, that's interesting. That's a little interesting. Hmm. That's something. I'm going to still keep picking up weapons, though. Because I am going to want a little bit better for the end of the game. But for now, this is going to be perfect. So how does this compare to what you were using, you know, last run when you had the Excalibur, but, you know, you were just using the rock end of it? How does this compare to that? So I would say Excalibur is at top tier, one of the three or four best weapons. This is, like, top 15. Okay. Still very good. We're not quite at that point yet. You're getting a top 15 weapon like 40 floors in is uh, pretty lucky. <laughs> that guy just like teleports, just appears there. He's like, hey, how you doing? Well, this is not good. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, this is one of those rooms that I'm really scared of. Uh, okay, let's just get out of here. If I had stuck around for that, I could have very easily gotten into a situation where I was taking, like, four hits at once, so... Uh, good call to bail. Oh my god, oh my god! Uh, do we take this? Yeah, I think so. So how much is, like, survival super paramount where you would want to kind of, like, farm the succubus a little bit if you needed to? Well, that's the interesting thing, right? On normal mode, there's no downside for doing a farm. Unless you're speed running, right? You got the, uh, the clock running. Uh, here, though, it's quite different. The longer you wait, the more difficult the game becomes. So, um, I would say, unless you get a really fast farm, it's probably not worth it. Of course, there's another one. I'm dead. Oh, my God. Oof. I would have been exactly dead there. Uh, all right. Good use of a high potion. Now, I'm out of healing. Straight up out of healing. Is that like a frame-perfect heal there? It could have been. I mean, the imp, if the imp had done a certain attack, I, I would have just been toast. It's kind of amazing to me. I know you do this like almost every day, but you're just like chatting along, dealing with with my nonsense where there's like 30 things on the screen. I'm barely able to follow what's going on. You're like, yeah, this is completely normal. I just this is just what I do. You do build some muscle memory, but on nightmare mode, nothing really prepares you for how bad things get, which is cool, right? It's always interesting. So it's a shame I had to use the uh the high potion there, but should be... Oh, this is not a good combo. No air control here is not good. Okay, we're going to be relying more on slide to go back and forth instead. Jumping is too risky. Nice. All right, well, you said you said 5, 15, or 40 before. We are past the 15 mark, so now we're we're aiming for that 40. There's one one milestone to go. If I can somehow make it to 40 minutes, I'm going to be over the moon. Still got a long way to go, though. A two out of three on an unplanned run is, is pretty good, however you slice it. Yeah, to emphasize, I, uh, I was not expecting this. I did no prep, so... Uh... This is all nightmare mode improv. Ooh, whip knuckle's pretty good. All right, so we're getting up there now. I would say like 15 more floors or something will end up uh, with weapons around Rahab's sword maybe better. So how come that one dropped so much earlier than, than some of the others? So the drop tables are the same as the standard game, and in regular Aria, you can get a Rahab sword from Manny there. One of those things that just happens to work out. 
Same deal with getting like a battle axe from Minotaur, you can just happen to get that. Battleaxe right on cue. It's a good one. It's uh, almost like a better hammer, but uh, not quite as good. Oh, that's huge! Not quite as good as the um, the rehab sword. All right, so now we got a little bit more healing. Uh, I guess this is really risky, but I guess we're gonna do a little bit of Medusa. This is less for speed and more just for getting out of bad situations. Gotta be really careful with this. Let's just get out of here. I love the the diving kick right in the Medusa, just face first, just hi -ya! <laughs> like right there. See, that's the downside. Any any room with a swarm is um, kind of a, a risky one. <laughs> Getting owned. Grunting. Okay. The cat ran into me while I was teleporting. Is that fair? That doesn't seem very fair to me. They just wanted to come with you. It's a stray cat. They want to go home. Cursed enemies. And is this, this sprite in particular, is this the same, basically the same guys from Bloodstained? I forget his name, like Albert or something? You know, I never drew that comparison before. Yeah, the old man mage, um, yeah, that's kind of, uh, kind of an interesting connection. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Nice. Okay, so we've made it halfway through Nightmare Mode on the first try. Let's okay, go. That's pretty good. I wish there was somewhere we could see the stat on like how much uh, you healed with Succubus, like how much that is keeping things going. Okay, now Undine opens up a new healing item. I gotta remember to do that. Uh, Gorgon's pretty good. Alright, so I'm gonna take Gorgon until I need healing. This is actually the better yellow for now. No more hard landings, don't have to worry about that. I love how randomly it's just like you picked up $10, or in that case, $1. More healing. Okay. Even more healing. I noticed uh, the two notch up there, so it's slightly harder. Oh, yes. Thank you for the reminder. Yes. Things have now gotten even more difficult. So how often is that notch? I think you said eight minutes, right? It's something like... I don't remember the exact number, unfortunately. Okay. Um, then it, then it might like tick that. up... I think it's about eight. It might tick up to three soon, there. Other than angry Pinocchio. There's the Rahab sword, okay. Now we're all caught up, there's flights. That that move. Well, I don't really want to be here right now. Oh, that, that movement was so clean though, you were like, nope, and then backstep. A little bit too much.
uncurse potion. So that basically means if you got cursed by one of these rooms or an enemy, you can use that and it just takes it away. Exactly, pretty useful. Now, Poison Fist at this point is kind of neat. I don't want to intentionally lower my HP, but uh, if I have to, it's a pretty good option. The ninja. Maybe switch over to that at low HP for some extra damage. I don't want to obble here, but uh, that room is too busy, I think. Please tell me that horse is also called Nightmare. Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. I was like, I have this pun. I don't know if it's intentional, but please tell me it is. Um, well now. I'm fighting death on the moon, huh? <laughs> uh, it's not, not great. Okay, what's my game plan here? Uh, definitely, uh, Succubus again. Curly, maybe? I think this feels more like a phase two option. I love how you're fighting him on the moon and then there's the giant moon in the background. It's a fake moon. Okay, pretty good phase one. Um, I'm not sure this is gonna reach. Let's try it. It does. Not that much damage though. That was a that was a very nice slide right under. Seems like low gravity might be helping here. Let's go! I'm... I'm amazed. Okay, good stuff. 70 down. Okay, and that's, uh, what, 50 to go? Yeah, 50 to go. And I've got everything except for bats. Where that is. Oh, it's up here somewhere. Valman way. This is the, uh, the Chrysogram if you've played Symphony of Night. However, in Ari, it's just so much worse. Not even worth using. That's bad. Oh, I can't. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, Nightmare Mode is getting hard again. Like, Succubus is great and all, but if you're running into a Laura Une, it's not a lot you can do. I like how that was right there at the door. Like, there's nothing you can do, just hello. <laughs> Um, dude. why is it always big guy? Uh, I'm getting out. I'm getting out. Let's bail. Are you kidding me? <laughs> on the I way got out. stuck with the dryad on the way out. Oh, that's uh, that's unfair. All right, there's the super. Oh, it's brutal. That's brutal. Well, hopefully I can uh, heal up and up here. Survive. That's a great armor up there. And we, Pallet Ball. Ooh. We are starting um, to A get... lot of enemies in the game resist dark, but uh, this is worth using anyway. It's very strong. And as we are starting to get a little bit towards the end of showtime, I was wondering if you want to take a minute to kind of tell people where they can find you, any shout-outs you want to give, or hopefully I don't cause you to die by asking questions. Oh, don't worry. It's not your fault. It's, uh, it's just another nightmare room. So I stream Castlevania five to six days a week on twitch.tv slash jupiterclimb. I'm going to be doing Nightmare Mode speedruns in the near future. So uh, that'll be fun. Of this in particular? It's going to be, uh, 
A lot more of this. And have you, as of yet, completed a nightmare mode? I have, yeah, I've completed a few. But so always playing pretty safe. Speed run is going to be uh, quite a different experience. Just don't do it, man. Just don't do it, man. All right, different room. Anybody? All right, that's much easier. It does seem like you have different options, though, of which ways to go and things, so you're not locked into one direction. Exactly. If there's one room that's just impossible, or if it's like a bad fit for your current loadout, you can 100% go somewhere else. Now, uh, slow weapons, bad. But I do have a missile tain. Uh, which uh, Legion is weak to. If I got like backdash cancel, it's gonna be a little bit weird. All right, here we go. Gonna have to play this safe. What can I use from this side? Um. Maybe curling. And this will probably be, uh, however this does go, will probably be the last boss that we're able to showcase, sadly. Um, Jupiter is frankly... Oh, I'm sorry, I lost track of time, yeah. No, no, no. This... We were joking during the uh, during break. Like, if it happened to be a really good run, we might not have time to finish it. I think this is a good ending point, anyway. I've uh, shown off a lot of the effects that combine with bosses, so... Uh... No, this is... Hopefully it was good to watch. No, this has been amazing. This is nothing that you did anything wrong here. We are so lucky that you were willing to stick around and show us, you know, just what this uh, this mod is capable of and just how how uh, difficult some of this can get. So I know that I will be stopping by your stream to see you speed run some of this. And if you want to, to finish up the run after um, and, and let me know, I can let chat know if anyone's, you know, curious how this one finishes out. Um... Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest here. This Legion fight is taking longer than I was. <laughs> I, I might call it here anyway. I, I think this is a good place to stop. We'll get better runs in the future, but um, all right. Let's do one more curly here. Nice. Barely got through that. It's interesting. You took and damage. And the shell while should you were doing break. That. Here we go. Almost done. Oh, that, that person's, like, flying now. Okay. So floor 80, that'll be the stopping point. Well, you know what? GG. That is GG. Thank you so much for showcasing that. That is... Further than I think we thought we were going to go, and we made it more than halfway. Yes. We made it past two out of three milestones. So, like, and remember, everyone, this was not planned. Jupiter did not intend or come into today expecting to run that. So that is just, like, a testament to his extreme knowledge and skill when it comes to Castlevania. So thank you so much for, for showcasing that. Do you have any uh, last, uh, last shout outs or anything before we start to wrap up? Well, honestly, it was a, um, a privilege to be part of the Perilous Paths debut. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. I think this is an awesome uh, show concept, and uh, very best of luck going forward. I will definitely be tuning in myself. Um, but yeah, hopefully everyone enjoyed it tonight. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Like I said earlier at the beginning of the stream, when I when this show was greenlit, I knew exactly who I wanted on the first episode. So like, I appreciate you being my guinea pig, sitting through... Uh, all of my random questions and even doing a challenge run. So like, I know when I speak uh, on behalf of Chad and everyone here, we are so thankful to have had you. It was an amazing time. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. And uh, I will go ahead and start wrapping up this stream because we're running a little bit over time. So I just want to say thank you to everyone out there for joining us for the first episode of Perilous Paths. If you enjoyed this content, we will be here every Monday at the same time slot, so 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern or whatever that is in your local uh, time zone. If um, you want to learn more about GDQ Hotfix's new season four and the new schedule, 
we have uh, a, an updated, in-depth schedule on our website at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. Remember, we have debuted a lot of different shows for this season. Perilous Pass is just one of them, and we actually have another brand new show, Hidden Heroes, hosted by Anarchy, coming up right after this, so make sure you stay tuned for that. I want to thank Ahadi and Jupiter Climb again as our runners for showcasing everything they do. It was such an amazing uh, time spending with Bloodborne and some Castlevania, two of my favorite things. And then uh, also, I want to thank my production partner, Ray, who does so much work behind the scenes that makes all of this popular or possible. So thank you so much for that. And without further ado, I will say that is it for us uh, this episode. Stay tuned, come back for the next one, and I'm wishing you all a wonderful rest of your week. Take care.